Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Breakfast with Boom. Happy New Year. Let's hope that 2020 is going to be absolutely fantastic for all of us. As you can see, we have uh, three of the panel members, including myself, and BitCloud Gaming should be here momentarily. Uh, but I want to just welcome everyone once again. Uh, I know we have a bunch of people waiting. And listen, I, 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 first, I first have to say this. Um, yesterday's show, uh, which was the Xbox Factor podcast, uh, is my personal largest viewed live show. It just broke 6,000 views in under 24 hours. That is completely mind-blowing for me personally. Uh, and of course, that is thanks to this outstanding community that has not only accepted me into it, uh, but it completely and continuously supports Double Barrel Gaming, and I want to thank everybody for that. Uh, so let's get into the introductions. So we have a lot to cover, and so they're not going to be elaborate, but they are going to be, you know, what you would expect. First of all, I have to uh, introduce, you know him as the king of the Iron Lords. He is the king of statues, and he also is the king of financials, because we were talking behind the scenes. <laughs> I want to welcome uh, uh, the Iron Lords' biggest voice, the bodyguard that will beat you down and then lift you back up. Please welcome King David. <laughs> Boom. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, how are you going to do it right? You're going to do it right by being on breakfast. And boom. <laughs> First show of the year. <laughs> That's how we do it, baby. Let's do it. Let's get it done. Well, listen, thank you so much for being here. And next, you know him as the raunchiest man on the YouTube scene. He has an amazing show with an amazing co-host. He's very, very active within the community and someone that, in fact, does play multiplayer games and is not afraid to show his gamer score. Please welcome the nasty but excellent Noof Nukem. Boom, boom, kaboom. It's 2020 in the room. This is an amazing panel. I am so grateful and happy to be here on the first Breakfast of Boom of 2020. Boom. Congratulations, first of all, on all your success, especially over the past year. You've seen exponential growth, and it's because you're putting in the work, brother, and that's what happens. If you put in the work and you're just a likable guy, good things happen to you. So keep it up in 2020, brother. I hope to be on many more podcasts with you over the course of the year. Like I said, this great panel. It's going to be some awesome topics, great reflection. Can't wait to get into it, and uh, hey, man. Man, if you need one of those celebrity guests to, to jump in at any time, uh, just give the holler. You know, I, I know the big guy, Arnie. He's usually not too far away. Well, I, you know what? I did send him an email, and hopefully later on he will, uh, you know, grace us with his presence. Because, you know, it's always good to hear from him. And, you know, obviously I don't get a chance to pay him that much. But he's still, uh, you know, appreciative of the few cents I sent him. Uh, and uh, that's tax. Uh, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll come around to him. And uh, next up, we have someone that has, uh, I want to call him Detective Zemi. Uh, he is working on, a, a behind the scenes, some really, really interesting, uh, stalk-worthy news <laughs> hound abilities. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously, he just put out a new video. I think everyone should get out and check out. Uh, but, you know, obviously, Zemi, you are part, uh, you were a part of yesterday's record-breaking show. Uh, and uh, it is great to have you a part of uh, the Xbox Factor podcast. And, of course, this is where you made your start on Breakfast with Boom. So it's great to have you back. Welcome to the show, dude. Absolutely. And thank you so much for throwing me the invite to hop on to the very first Breakfast with Boom for 2020. Super excited to be here. Yesterday was an absolutely fantastic show, record-breaking show. So let's do that again, and let's do another record-breaking show today. Well, I definitely appreciate it. So, you know, we're going to open up with uh, something that I think a lot of people are going to be talking about. Uh, 2020 is shaping up to, of course, be one of the biggest years in gaming. Now, I have said this on numerous t uh, occasions in my gaming career, but both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S are set to launch in the busiest times of the year. And, of course, we're talking about fall 2020. Now, there's been a lot of talk of a possible Switch Pro uh, releasing that will, of course, up the ante with Nintendo and what they can bring to the table uh, through graphical fidelity. Uh, I, they did the unthinkable in 2019, and that was release a ton of exclusive second and third party titles, along with a huge helping 
of quality first party games to satisfy every Nintendo Switch owner. So let's not forget also the listed titles here that are, are that are going to be releasing in the, um in in 2020 and I have a good feeling that many of these titles that I'm going to list will wind up being in a lot of the gaming medias as well as the gaming public's top 10 for 2020. So let me read off a list just to kind of, you know, paint the picture for what exactly is in fact coming out in 2020. You have the Resident Evil 3 remake. You have Cyberpunk 2077, which you see on the screen. You have, of course, The Last of Us 2 which I just put up on the screen, which is going to be an epic adventure. I cannot wait to play Naughty Dog's latest. You have Halo Infinite, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Marvel's Avengers, Watch Dog Legion, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Doom Eternal, Dying Light 2, Bleeding Edge, and the possibility of us playing Ghosts of Toshima as well as Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, which a lot of people are doubting that's going to come out, but... I still am in the camp that that's going to be a launch title. Now, listen, this is going to be an epic and fantastic year for the PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo owners. Both PlayStation VR and PSVR units will also be loaded with plenty of content. Plus, the, uh, the you know, I mean... You know, with with that with that investment of five hundred dollars that you're going to spend on your VR units, you will have games to play. King, I want to go to you first on this. You know, with everything that we know that are, that's coming out, which quite frankly is is substantial, especially if you are someone like us who supports multiple consoles, and what we don't know, the unknown of what's going to surprise us in twenty and twenty twenty. How excited, but also how hurtful will your wallet be? Oh, well, um, <laughs> there's people that support multiple consoles. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that's, to... that, yeah that, that's like the Yeti. It, yeah, it, it's rare. We're supposed to fanboy out and <laughs> lock ourselves away from other consoles. What? No. Um, <laughs> uh, listen, okay. Well, thank God for Game Pass. All right. That, that yes. off the rip, that saves me a ton. I got Game Pass up to, I think it's like 2027, 20, something crazy like that. Um, so I don't worry about that. Uh, you know, Xbox first party games are in uh, Game Pass. So you could take all those games off the docket. That's good. I'm good there. I will have to worry about it as a console, right? Okay. Right. So we figure that the Xbox console will be anywhere from uh, 500 to $600. Uh, I'm going with $600 more than likely uh, for the high end model. Um, I still believe they're going to go with a two skew. You say uh, Sony, I believe Sony's going to come in at $500, uh, underpowered, uh, but uh, price range will be $100 cheaper. The $100 model works for them and whatever games that they have at launch. I wish they look over at the, uh, the Game Pass numbers and make PlayStation Now the same thing. I yeah, really wish too. they do. You know, um, I heard uh, through Hip Hop Gamer, shout out to Hip Hop Gamer, of the backwards uh, compatibility remastering thing that they're working on with Gaikai and the company that they had in the works for forever. So hopefully that stuff does come to fruition where the PlayStation 1 games all the way up to PlayStation 4 is backwardly compatible with the PlayStation 5. I hope so. I hope that's a thing. I hope it's a pop in a disc type of thing like Microsoft stuff is. If not, um, I'm pretty sure that they have a service that you're able to, you know, get your games back. I hope you don't have to buy the same games that you have. Uh, and then you're going to say the Switch, uh, Switch Pro. Hmm. I think they're the one that are in this weird world where they're stuck, right? Because yes. the Switch was underpowered going in. And you know the Pro was be super underpowered going in against these Navi-based systems. Uh, because the GPU and the CPU are open now. The bottleneck is gone. So the fidelity on the games and the, the geometric engines are going to be more robust, right? So how would they be able to keep up? What type of architecture would be inside a Switch Pro? I'm more intrigued about that than anybody else because I want to see how Nintendo will pull a rabbit out of their hat. I don't want them to falter like this would be like the Wii U, you know, up yes. for, for them. I don't want that to happen. Um, so their games are going to be uh, financially 
we're looking at anywhere to uh, three thousand to four to five thousand dollars at the end of the year. To be honest with you, for games and systems combined with the VR and everything, I will tell everybody start budgeting and planning now. Yeah, like <laughs> start putting away that a little fifty dollars a week now. So by the time your systems do come out, you sell your old systems. Because remember, they go with you. So make sure that you get GameStop while they still open before they close down. Um, <laughs> And you can just, you know, have some money put away. I, I really think this year, um, this is more about financial planning and budgeting so that you're not caught out of pocket, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, listen, it's, it is it is going to be a budget. Uh, and I said this jokingly, and, and but I, I kind of want to just make, uh, you know, like a, like a public announcement. Uh, you know, obviously, the holidays just passed. And, and if you're a gamer, you know, most people... Uh, you'd probably ask your relatives, yeah, get me gift cards. You know, obviously, I, and I, I'd rather not the pair of underwear or the pack of underwear I'm not going to wear, right? Yeah. So they say, give me a $25 gift card. Take those gift cards, tuck them away in that underwear drawer, and forget that you own them because, you know, like what I did, and I know this, this is what I did is I'm going to be 50 in September, folks. I'm an old bastard, but I still do kid like things, right? Uh, I have two envelopes, two envelopes put away. One says Xbox Series X, the other one says PS5, and I'm I'm tu I'm tucking money in, I'm tucking gift cards in, and I'm gonna keep tucking until the to the, until they come out, until I can actually pre-order them, because I want as much money per console as possible. Because like what King was saying, and it makes a lot of sense. The good thing, the great thing about Xbox Game Pass, <clears throat> excuse me, is that we don't have to buy the games; they're all gonna be in there day one. Uh, Zemi, I want to go to you on that because obviously you are considering buying a PlayStation Five because you mm -hmm. are a fan of The Last of Us. You think Ghost of Tsushima looks amazing, and you want to. You actually probably wind up playing some of the other PlayStation Four games that you missed with uh, with with the Xbox having two SKUs, one of being the the premium, the 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 upper echelon of gaming, and the entry model for, of course, the casual gamers. There's going to be a lot of money spent on systems for you personally. Um, are you happy to know that Game Pass is there? And what games are you excited about? No, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think everybody's excited that Game Pass is there because it's going to save them so much money. Um, you know, I just automatically right off the rip, I won't have to pay $120 for the new Forza or the Halo game, right? So that's fantastic. Um, but I mean, even still though, even still, even with game pass, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. I mean, cause obviously, you know, I'm definitely going to be throwing out the money for an Xbox probably a few months after that, maybe even the same month I'll, you know, get a PS five, um, you know, last of us, that's going to be $60. Uh, I mean, there's just so many games, like it, just to talk about some of the games I'm excited about. I mean, obviously last of us two is going to be freaking amazing ghost of Tashima looks fantastic i'm really really pumped about that destroy all humans I'm yes so that looks good money. dude it looks really? a lot of fun i'm gonna spend so much money in like the first uh like the first season the first you know uh like q1 and q2 probably with uh destroy all humans that new 12 minutes games coming out really i've been pumped about that ever since i seen that at uh i believe it was like e3 yeah it was e3 um, when they first showed it off yep yeah absolutely and there's like tons of games that are coming out on pc that i'm super stoked for as well uh but then there's also the you know the games that we have no idea that maybe they can come out maybe they won't like fable 4 you know that's you're probably not going to come out in 2020 but you know we can all hope um that the new harry potter rpg the game that i every single two seconds that i can ever find a moment to even talk about that i will that <laughs> might be coming out which you know is like another 60 dollars just down well not really down the drinks i'm gonna enjoy that game so much but there's just so many games coming out like i think it's you know uh king said you know everybody start budgeting it's gonna be really hard for a lot of people to budget because all of these new games are going to be coming out cyberpunk which looks fantastic as well um so I, it's it's gonna cost me a lot of money but yeah i mean those are some of the games i'm super excited for but you know and then on top of all of that you know I, I i'm probably not the only one but i don't actually have a 4k uh like monitor I, I have a 4k tv but i don't like playing my games off the tv so you know i'm i'm probably going to be throwing out you know another 200 300 on a 4k monitor which is i mean it's going to be very very expensive coming up but i'm i'm super excited 
I mean, listen, there's uh, actually I have to thank somebody in the super chat. I dropped a two dollar super chat. Let me just grab that real quick. It says, uh, it's, first of all, it's from Spider Man. Thank you so much for the generosity, dude. Really appreciate that. And also appreciate you being here. He says, is there any year better than the year of the next gen? I'm going to be honest with you. Um, you know, again, doing this for a very long time, you get you get to you get to read a lot. And being in gaming since 1978, obviously, I've experienced a shit ton of stuff when it comes to gaming. And most gamers who remember 2007 and King, you can agree with this. Oh, yes. I think 2007 is still revered as the best year in gaming history. The the amount of titles. Uh, the 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 relevance of those titles, even in 2020, still stands strong. And uh, I have to be honest with you, you know, 2020, I think, is the first legitimate year that that 2007, that magic 2007 is actually going to be bumped down to second place. There yeah. are just so many games. King, you want to elaborate on that? Well, the, the, the thing is. We don't know exactly the titles that are going to be launching, you know, for exactly. these next systems. So that's the anticipation that we have there. You're looking forward to um, a lot of these games like Resident Evil 3 Remake. And you, you know the next Forza is going to hit. Uh, you know Halo. What is what is Halo really going to be about? And then you're saying, please, Sony, uh, make sure you just have at least one banger. Let's let's get that resistance in, in the first uh, release. Because we know Sony always starts off slow and builds to a, yes. a, a boil, you know? And Microsoft usually comes out swinging, gives you at least three to four titles that you definitely need to have. And the alleviation of having a Game Pass, and I, I can't stress that enough to people because, you know, this this holiday season, I purchased um, uh, Xbox One, uh, you know, for my son, and I got him Game Pass. And Microsoft has this little monitoring system that, where you can, you know, monitor your child to see exactly what they're doing and all. And it's very meticulous. It goes down to the hour, minute, and second of what games that they're playing, who messaged them, what are the messages. It really hands-on type of thing that you can check and you get your emails about it and i'm looking at what he plays and it's such a diverse library of all the stuff that he's jumping into and he's liking he's playing there's not just uh, Fortnite or you know uh, PUBG or whatever he's playing uh stuff like wh what is this um this battle simulator thing that was just released in um game pass and i'm i'm looking at his stuff and i'm like this stuff wouldn't be possible financially for me to purchase these games for exactly. him at yes. the rate that's happening. And I, I know that the adoption rate must happen. I, it has mm -hmm. to happen. And we have to be more vocal for it to happen to save us because, you know, he just said that he has to buy a monitor. Come on, man. That's $200 for games. You know, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. Well, not just that. I also, I really want to get one of those new elite controllers to play on that brand new trophy of an Xbox that's going to be standing high on my desk. I keep saying that, yes. uh, but you know, that's like what, uh, like almost another two hundred dollars. You know, that's one hundred and eighty. Yes. Well, yeah. you know, listen, those controllers speak for themselves. They have a lifetime warranty. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you'll love it. Uh, I, I do it. I purchase them. Boom. Got a chance to see the new one. Woo did. Didn't you pre-order pre yours? Yeah, I right have there? it. I, you yeah, actually, you know what, what? What I wind up yeah. doing is this. My wife has a hard time finding stuff for me. So she basically told me, listen, you have a lot of controllers. You have already three other elites. You don't need the new one. Save it for <laughs> Christmas. So that's what I did. I wound up canceling my pre-order. But I, I did get it for Christmas, and it is out. I actually got two controls. I got the uh, Gears, uh, the Kate Diaz controller, as well as nice. the new Elite that controller, and they're both amazing. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's, you see, so it's, it's, it's these little things. Also, start treating your games like movies, all right? Um, all those people that knew that uh, Rise of the Star, uh, Skywalker was coming out at the end of the year, they probably forego a couple of movies uh, in the beginning, because it's becoming financially uh, impossible to go to see every movie, right? So you start picking and choosing, yes. and then you're starting to hope that your favorite game falls into any service that comes out. Does it go to EA Play? Does it go to PlayStation Now? Does it go to Game of the Month or whatever? Those games, or you, or you wait for Black Friday deal. Just start to hold off on all those games. You don't need to buy them date and date, because look at your backlog. 
Just, just take, a, take a step back. Zemi's backlog is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, let's you not know? talk. Let's well, not talk. That's a bad word. Let's not yeah. say backlog. Let's well, just... you, you you bring up you bring up the intangible factor here, and that is you can have all the money in the world, you can buy every game that you want, but at mm -hmm. the end of the day, many of us have to still get up and go to work. Yeah. Or you have families that you have to attend to, so there's only so much time. I can have all the games. What I'm constantly finding, yes, I'm looking at my backlog now, and I'm looking at the games installed on my hard drive, and it's only a fraction of mm -hmm. what a lot of you guys have. I know that, but I'm just like, even if I wanted to play that game, I can't play it. I just don't have the time. And then you look at a lot of these games that are out now, like most of them are not quick fixes. You can't jump in and, and, and beat the thing in 10 hours. You're looking, I mean, frig, I spent 90 minutes playing one boss in Sekiro the other night. And I was like, man, if this is the trudge it's going to be. It's going to take me 100 hours to finish that game. It's going to take me an hour to beat one dude. So mm -hmm. uh, holy mackerel. Um, so that that's the other side. And that's, and again, uh, you know, you guys know how I feel on Game Pass. I think it's phenomenal value. And I do support the fact that people go out and support that. But I, I am not on that bandwagon. I just, to, 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 to me, it, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's just not happening for me. I said, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the last dinosaur. And I'm happy with that. Uh, kicking <laughs> and screaming right, right till the bitter end. But that's, that's just a new Nukem thing. And everybody knows that. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's to each his own. It's always worked that way. That's always the that's the beauty about choice, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you you choose to how you spend your money and why you spend. Money. You get up and go to work. So, however you spend your money is your business. You know, it just works for me. And if if I do like a game that's inside Game Pass, I look and see what's leaving that month. If I do want to purchase that game, I'll purchase that game to have it in my file. But also. And and Boom knows this. If I really, really love a game, I'm going to go out and purchase it, the hard copy. Yeah. You know, it, mm -hmm. Just in case, you know, something happens, just in case the internet blows up that day and, <laughs> and, I, can't, and I can't play, but I can play my favorite <laughs> games. And I do have some, yeah. some physical games, but, you know, they're making it too enticing now, you know, for, mm -hmm. for these like 20% right. off on digital copies. And you're like, what? My biggest problem is, the, the hell with 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 the time. My my biggest problem is I'm playing these crash course games that's like college courses, like Destiny Two, <laughs> and every Tuesday is a daggone reset, and you're, you're playing catch up, so you're done by Thursday. But then you want to get a game in of Sekiro, like he said. I booted up Sekiro. I only got to a couple of screens, and I was like, oh, I gotta turn this off because I didn't play Destiny for six hours today, and it's, that's it. That's my game. A lot of time is done. You know, so I, I feel you. I'm with you. I'm right with you all the way through. <laughs> well, real quick, before I ask the, the, the question of this particular topic, I just kind of wanted to get everyone's flavor and uh, pulse for 2020. I have to thank, first of all, Robert Jones with the very outrageously generous uh, $25 Super Chat. He says, just thinking, if Sony is trying for 400 at 9 T-flops, and the lock uh, the Lockhart at two, 4 T-flops needs to be less than 250 to be viable. So, Rob, here's the thing. You see, I think people have a horrendous misconception of what Sony's price point is going to be. You see, we're not talking <laughs> about Microsoft. Now, see, and, and I'll say this. i say this publicly. No company, and, and King, of course, will agree because he's a businessman. No company wants to take an L. They don't want to lose one penny per console. Sony is financially in no way, shape, or form able to take a hundred dollar loss. I still think the 9.2 T flop PS5 is going to be 499, and you can actually put you could lock that in and take that to the bank. Now, do I think that um, Microsoft's like King was saying earlier is 599? I, I would I would say that the power that's in there could potentially be a 599 box, but Remember, Phil Spencer said on numerous interviews that they are not going to be out of position, and I quote, for price and power. Mm -hmm. So what it seems like is going to happen, and remember this day, remember the first episode of Breakfast with Boom, I called this. Microsoft is going to release the 12 teraflop 
beast at four ninety nine. Even if they eat a couple of dollars per system, and Sony is going to be really backed into a corner because I, I think we get a two ninety nine Lockhart at 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 uh, at a four T flops four to five. It could even be six for we the final specs haven't been done, so mm -hmm. we don't know. It's going to be slightly more powerful than the X, and quite frankly, the X is a, an amazing system. And then you're going to have the high end, and Sony's going to be sandwiched in the middle. Um, so it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how aggressive Microsoft is going to want to get to take that early lead. And I have to thank Real Disaster for becoming a, a, a channel member for the, um, uh, you know, for, for, for my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for that. And uh, th that is really, really awesome of you to do. Uh, and uh, if anyone is not, you know, I don't really push it. And, you know, there's a few things I need to do better as a YouTuber. I don't like to over monetize the channel because I do this out of the passion for the community and for gaming. But this is a business at the end of the day or becomes one, uh, you know, once you you know start hitting a certain number. And I, I, I talk to a few people, some people, I'm not going to mention who they are. They're people I trust indubitably when it comes to business uh, and uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, monetizing YouTube, and I thought that the channel membership was something uh, for a community uh, to give the opportunity for a community member that wanted to be to help the channel grow and and and, and allow me to do more giveaways. Which obviously we did a big one for uh, this past Christmas. Which King and I believe Newf Newcomb were you a part of that as well, Newf? On, on what? Sorry. Yeah, the, the the Christmas episode that we did. I don't remember if you were. It's, it's no, been, no, um, no, I don't think it, so. it, it, it was, was a bit of a blur. Yeah, yeah but I know King you, Ainsley. Yes, and, and uh, um, I think it was Big Cloud. Yeah, Big uh, Cloud, and I believe Shady, Shady and it was it was yeah. also uh, his yeah. co-host. Um, Oh my primal yeah. eve was there so yeah yes. so, uh, so yes. again it's 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 a smaller way that if you want to you want to help the channel grow obviously the the join button is available on my youtube channel and i just want to thank you real disaster for doing that that's gr very kind of you and we also have another one joe bailey just jumped on the bandwagon joe thank you so much for that that is very kind of you and i do certainly appreciate that um, and uh, as you can see, I added some some different graphics. So I had I have, I have something scrolling in the bottom that gives all of the the names of the uh, channel members, the Patreon members. Uh, but you know what? Let's continue on with this topic. You know, we have 150 people wa watching, which is fantastic. I want to thank everybody for being here. But my question is, and Noof, I'll start with you real quick. Sure. What are you most excited about for gaming in 2020? Is it the consoles? Is it the games? Is it a combination of the bo of both? And, and, and a second bit of a, a, a smaller sub question, are mm -hmm. you excited to see the potential of older classic IPs be remade for the cur current generation and what those titles could possibly be? Well, absolutely. I, I think I speak for everyone here on this panel, and I'm, you're all going to have your own opinions on this, but I'm pretty sure that every one of us here is excited for the new generation of consoles and what they're going to bring to the table. I think that's that's a hands-down uh, no-brainer. But you can't have a great console without having fantastic games. And if there's one thing I feel that the Xbox One X uh, failed a little bit in to really drive the message home is we know that many of us who own the X, it is a fantastic console. We've seen some of the benefits right out of the box. But to be honest, I really don't think that anyone has really built a game from the ground up on the X and really pushed its envelope uh, as yep. far as it can go. I, th I think we've seen a lot of ports. I think we've seen, yes, higher frame rates. We've seen the little things, the little things, sure. Uh, and in comparison, if you go back to the OG Xbox and you sit it side by side on the X, it's 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 kind of night and day. Like, uh, you know, I, I love the 4K fidelity. A lot of people always choose to go performance mode. But as I've said to people in the past, I didn't spend – uh, well over $1,000 on a 4K TV to play mm -hmm. in, things, in games that are sub 4K. Mm -hmm. I mean, not every game hits 4K regardless of the Xbox enhancements, but I'm hoping that with this generation of consoles that next to all the games at least get to 4K fidelity and hopefully we have more consistent and better frame rates overall. So the, the consoles, yes, but obviously it's going to be the games. And, um, you know, I'm not going to... This is probably part of your topics for down the road, so I don't want to jump in too much and go overboard here, but what can I say, baby? It's the return of Halo. It's 2020, yes. new gen, a new console, and Halo is back. I'm hoping it's back in a big way. I, if there's one game and only one game, 
I need for this year. It is Master Chief and company kicking some butt. Uh, hopefully, it's a return to form for Xbox. B. That's that's what I need. But it's all about the games. And yes, yeah, and as far as seeing some IPs come back, we've seen how Resident Evil, we've seen how Legend of Zelda came back this year. Older games uh, that were with a new coat of paint that turned out to be big, big hits. Which I, which based on their success, I definitely see this happening a lot more um in the future i think sega right now i think is working on i don't know if it's a combo i don't know if they're going to upgrade the games but i heard something about going back to bayonetta and vanquish and putting them on a, on a combo yeah no, they're, they're going to run it 4k you know. 60 dude yep that's ridiculous yeah but i would like to see the older <laughs> i would like to see games post uh like the dual shock era like games that had great story like we're seeing final fantasy for example final fantasy 7 which came out on the original playstation which was basically using a d-pad i think when that game first came out i don't even think the dual shock existed no, they didn't, they, it, was, it was just right? playing on d-pad yeah so like <laughs> so could you imagine the older tomb raider games for example which ran on that archaic uh you know eight way uh <laughs> thing yeah. back then and, uh, you know, we saw that they did it with the original Tomb Raider earlier in the gen. They remade it, and they made it with the more updated controls. And that was fantastic, updated graphics and controls. So I'd like to see more stuff like that come to the forefront. As long as the games aren't, like, overpriced, I don't think a lot of these games should be, like, you know, full value $80. Uh, you know, make them a little bit easier priced. And, of course, it would be great for Game Pass. But uh, I would definitely like to see if the franchise is returned. Yeah, well, I mean that that that's actually a really great picks, uh, King. I want to go to you next because obviously you you are uh, you, you enjoy your classic IPs. Uh, mm -hmm. You still play arcade games on on your machine that you have that's on on, on the yeah. the uh, left of you. And <laughs> oh, yeah, um, exactly. yes, I, I know I haven't been to your house yet, but I know where it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm like what? Oh, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know it's it's. It's going to be a great year uh, for you personally. What what has you honestly uh, tickled pink as a gamer? But more importantly, what classic IPs? Like we've been hearing rumors that Blue Point could potentially be remastering two classic PlayStation games, which has me excited. Now, one is Demon Souls, and I was mm -hmm. terrible at that game, just like I am at Dark Souls and all of them. But I'll probably still buy the damn thing. The second title, though has me very excited because there has been rumors that they are remastering and redoing from the ground up Metal Gear Solid, the original, unbelievable, one of, still in my top five games of all time. I would love a remaster of that or a remake on the level of Resident 2. But for you, what classic IP would you like to see come back? Okay. Um, this is going to be a bit left field. I pray and I pray every day. Y'all know I do combat talk with the king. Uh, fight night. Oh, um, that's a good one, dude. I, yes. I keep, I keep hearing rumblings. See, everybody thinks Floyd Mayweather is coming back next year and he's going to come back to the ring. I honestly think he's going to come back to the fight night uh, franchise. Um, you know, we have VR boxing. We had the Rocky VR boxing. Uh, that was great. That's that's like you know a, a real good decree uh, thing. That was that was really good. It was fun, but I want a classical fight night game with all these boxes that we have now. I, I really want to get that that sweaty thumb going on. I really want to get that <laughs> online crap talking. I really want that there. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of guys. Uh, I want Project Gotham Racing if if I can get yes. that. Um, <laughs> um, and that Fable, I know Fable won't be at launch, right? Because we already know that we're going to get Breath of the Wild too. Yes. So that 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 stuff is coming. It's all about the fan service that you want inside your heart, right? What 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 makes your heart, you know, go for? Because I remember when we had Ready to Rumble for the Dreamcast when that oh came my out. God, that was a launch title, dude. Oh, man, I think Dreamcast had the greatest launch library 26 games game history yeah. and i had every last one of those games and i was grandfather <laughs> man do, do you know how i felt that day yeah. i felt like king of the world that day i felt like i felt it because you know when you pop those games in and you mm -hmm. was looking around and you're like yeah, this is it this is where i'm at this is it was no better feeling and i want that feeling this year like boom said this year has the potential to bump past years to second place whatever whatever year you feel was, was first place this year has the potential to do so because we already know that the hardware is ready yes i agree 
you know, and 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 Duke pointed out, you know, the fidelity, the software. They never got a chance to max out that X, mm-hmm. but these dudes. These are the big burly, you know, these football players. These, 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 these yeah. are, this is it right here. You know, either one, I don't care what camp you're in, you know, you know that these are the big boys. They're coming to play. Mm-hmm. And you want that one that's title great. that's going to make you say, I, this is the reason why I purchased this damn television. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. This is it. You know, so like he said, I don't do the performance. I do the fidelity too, brother. I, <laughs> I pay too much for my television. I want to see every last nook and cranny I can get out of it. So yeah, I'm I'm down for all of that. But mine is fight night and maybe that Project Gotham so I can get those kudos when I turn that corner. So yeah, oh, I, yeah. I, that's what I'm looking for for me. Hey, when I go to the strip club, I don't care if she walks the runway faster. I want her to look better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I was I'm waiting for that. that. <laughs> I'm with that. I'm with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, listen. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun, uh, Zemi. I, I want to go to you because obviously we 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 know that the the, the game that you want most is Harry Potter. Uh, you, so much so that you are you, you are what we, 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 we know that you're you're working on a few things on the background. We know that you just put out an amazing video talking about it. Uh, but for you personally, what what really has you super excited for 2020? And more importantly, what older IP would you like to see come back? Uh, Harry Potter. No. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> no, <I'm> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, what really has me excited is, is the, like the games. Like, I, you know, like, um, I mean, like these new consoles are going to be fantastic, right? Like they are, but like they're going to be useless without the games, you know? So I, I'm just so excited about these games. The ones that are coming early, the ones that, you know, we know of that's going to be coming on, you know, coming out later on, you know, this, um, this, this year. Um, so I'm, you know, just games, games, games. Um, I, I really would love to see them like bring out some, like some, some classic games. Um, I, I saw a bunch of people in the chat talking about Rainbow Six, like Black Arrow yes, in Vegas. Yes, I would New Vegas freaking again. die. Yeah. Like I would, I don't even care. Like I'd, I'd throw a hundred twenty dollars at it day one to get it. Um, because I'm a major fan of that. Uh, that's some of like the best like first person shooter multiplayer gaming that I've ever done. I I absolutely love those games. They're fantastic. I would love to see. Uh, obviously we. We know that they're doing Fable, so uh, but Alpha Protocol. I think I've mentioned that before. Yeah, it's one of your favorites. I, yeah, I mean Obsidian. You know, Xbox has Obsidian. I, I would absolutely die for like an Alpha Protocol two or just like a remake or something. Um, you know, I I, I thought of something else, uh, but I forgot it. And and what I'm about to say isn't it? But Splinter Cell would be amazing. Uh, also, yesterday we were talking about like the perfect Dark Zero. Like you just got me so excited with like the whole Splinter Cell like you know kind of like clone that Xbox could make with that if they ever decided to. I think that that would be fantastic as well. There's just I mean there's a ton of games. I would absolutely die to see like a Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic return or like oh, yeah. a, a remastered Mass Effect trilogy. Like that would be absolutely mind melting uh, as well. So. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, 2020 has me super, super pumped. I can't wait for the consoles, but the games is 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 what really gets me excited and gets me going. Well, I mean, listen, everyone has some great lists. Uh, for me personally, uh, and I'll just throw my uh, my two cents in there. Um, I, I I would love to see. Um, a, 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 again, for me, it's if Blue Point is working on something, I do really hope it is Metal Gear Solid. I, I think that is a, a, that is an IP that has, um, you know, obviously it took a turn for the worst with a lot of people didn't like Five. I happened to put a significant <laughs> amount of time into it. I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of people uh, didn't enjoy, uh, a lot of people enjoyed Four, but of course it was a PlayStation 3 exclusive. I enjoyed that just as much. I would love to see, um, that game come back and you know obviously we're going the next we're going to come up with the next topic in, in just about a second uh and it's going to be it's a sony based topic for sure um but it's uh sony doesn't have a lot of first party games uh you know uh slated for the launch of the ps5 they they, they have basically and i don't want i'm not trying to be like raunchy or anything they, they shot their load right you know the, the ghost of Tsushima, ghost of Tsushima is coming out in the summer last of us 2 uh, is, is coming out i believe uh, a few months before that so the only potential game 
that could be first party that we know is not going to be there, and that's basically been confirmed, is w- one I'm looking forward to, and that's uh, Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Like, I've been championing that game since it came out, and I got booed many times on uh, Crossfire for, for defending that game. I you love it. I think it's right still- now. Yeah, well, I mean, I know that you don't like it either, and that's fine. I mean, I get it. People don't don't care for it. For me personally, I I love the character, I love the environment, the aesthetics, the the robotic dinosaurs. Because I'm a diehard G1 Transformer fan, so I kind of got that vibe. Um, but that's the only game that could potentially come out, and uh, they're, they're they're in a bit of a pickle. I said that yesterday, and we're going to talk about it right now. As a matter of fact, uh, as you can see, I'm bringing up the graphics. Uh, and you know, let's you know what, let's jump right into it. You know, uh, there, there's been some leaked information that Sony is likely to be showing off the PlayStation Five at CES. The question that I have for the chat, and I, I and I'm going to read my spiel before I give the question to, of course, the uh, uh, the panel and get their answer is: Is it because their backs are to the wall now? As great as Sony has been this entire generation. Uh, we, it's safe to assume or even say publicly that they ruled the market in all facets. Strong hardware sales, check. Incredible marketing, check. Outstanding first, second, and third party exclusives, check. The run that they had were as, as, of, as of this show is unprecedented in every way. Now, with all of that success, though, there has been changes at the leadership position changes in ideology and a huge change in direction with the most important thing and king i think you'll have something to say about this community interaction now i would dare say that they have gotten lazy or i'm gonna say it that they might be resting on their laurels now king you talked about this numerous times on the iron lords uh where you have every sunday at 11 a.m. during the football season and at 1 p.m. Um, it went once the football season is over. Thank God it's over. Yeah, and it's over, pretty much <laughs> over. My team is out; they suck, but that's fine. It's a horse of another color. Um, but you know, yeah, yeah, well, not, yeah. They, they, Listen, they might be God, in the Super Bowl. They God might bless Super Bowl. you. My team never had a shot. Jets. Yeah. It's over, baby. It's over. <laughs> But you know um, the, the the thing with Sony is, and we 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 you don't agree with my statement about their backs being to the wall. But the, I, I am going to ask you, besides you know commenting on that, um, do you think that uh, there's a potential for a cockiness or a resting on their laurels simply because of their success? And could Jim Ryan trip up and make a mistake? Okay, all right. So you know we were talking about it behind the scenes. And my take on it is Sony doesn't have to do anything, but this is old Sony. Old Sony will have to sit there and watch the little cubs run around and them grow up and try to take the title. But the best thing that happened to Microsoft is they lost. The best thing that happened to Microsoft is they fell flat on their face. The best thing that happened to Microsoft is those words that he said, we have an Xbox for you came back and bit them straight in the butt. You know, That was the best thing that happened because that got out the, and I'm not going to say, I'm not going to use that word, that that got out the bad uh, part of the apple. You know, you have an apple and it's brown and you're like, I still want to eat this apple. This is my only apple, but I want to cut this brown part out, throw it in the garbage and get it out of here, you know, because it might mess up the rest of my good, delicious apple. So we got rid of that bad part and um, we found out it went a little bit deeper because uh, those p- powers that be weren't really behind Microsoft. So that, that happened, and that's good. Now, Sony, old Sony, because there's new heads in charge, there's new people in places, maybe they're not battle-worn. Maybe they don't understand exactly how to do this. Maybe they don't understand how to play this hand that's been dealt to them. Because Microsoft swung first, right? So... Uh, initially, we might feel that their back's up against the wall. Oh, Sony would be like, that's cute. You, you swung. That's nice. We don't know if this Sony might react to that swing. They might jump out of pocket. They might put something out that they're not ready to do yet. What I don't want them to do is I don't want them to come to CES and be nervous. I don't want them to come to CES and not be confident. I don't want them to come to CES and not be ready. See, I want both companies to shine. 
All right. I want them both to show their best. Now, CES will be a great format for them, a great platform. But but what consumer are you looking at then? Are you looking at the kids? Are you looking at the youth? Because the youth is not present at CES. It's just suit and ties at CES. Right. You know, so who are you marketing to then? Are you trying to get the news share cycle? What might get lost in the new 8K televisions? You might bring tech that's underpowered and and doesn't perform to the level of tech that's at the CS show. So honestly, I think they might show their VR there so that that would stand out and it will have a private show where they can have everyone. This would classic Sony would do all yeah. the airs, all the world to look at their product. You're not sharing time and space with other stuff at the CES show will outshine you. You know, you got machines and stuff there that are tens of thousands of dollars that the PlayStation 5 can't compete with. So uh, as nice, it, it, it will be a footnote at the CES show opposed to being the star at their own show. So I don't want them to, to fade themselves out of pocket now. We don't know who this new Sony is. There's a whole different uh, mantra there. You know, they're looking at games as a service. They're looking at putting their um, first party games on a uh, PC. They, they are expanding and changing into a different Sony. So what Sony we have, we don't know what Sony we have. Going forward, we want the same pedigree, but you can't ask somebody that never danced those dance steps to dance those dance steps. So be very careful when you're projecting what past Sony did to what future Sony would do, you know? So I don't think that backs up against the wall, but maybe their perception of it is different than mine. No, I mean, listen, it's, it's, it, what you said makes a lot of sense, you know, and obviously CES is in a few days, actually the sixth. Uh, and uh, it's uh, the report was pulled from screen rant where they are reporting. It's possible that Sony is planning to start the promotion of the PlayStation five at the upcoming 2020 CES event, as the official Sony website is promoting the hashtag Sony CES, uh, along with a statement saying the future is coming. Now, the blurb on the website, uh, and I'll go to uh, I'll go to Noop Nukem next on this. The blurb on the website, Noop, promises that Sony is unveiling a unique vision of the future that will unleash sensations and emotions, which sounds a lot like it could be promoting the PlayStation 5, but it also, I mean, again, this is just my personal opinion, sounds like they might be pushing and showing off for the first time the new PlayStation VR 2.0 headset, mm -hmm. which is something that I'm very interested in because, like yourself, we are VR guys. And I have a PlayStation VR. I have about 40 games for the PlayStation VR. I was a day one adopter. Uh, I bought the second version with the HDR pass through the next year. And I've been supporting it ever since. And thanks to Wilmy Hood and his generosity, I now have an Oculus Quest, which is taking up a significant amount of my time. What are your thoughts on what Sony is going to do? But what do you think they should do? And do you agree that with Microsoft's aggressive move on December 12th, does that put them in a bit of a, a pickle, so to speak? No, I, I don't think there's any harm in sort of teasing the PlayStation 5 at this point. I mean, it, you know, it's the worst kept secret in the world. We know it's coming out and it has to come out next year. So I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. But kind of like King David said, you know, it doesn't need to be a footnote on a stage lost in the, the shuffle. You know, there's a lot of time between here and, say, November, December of next year, whenever these consoles uh, figuratively will launch. And I assume they're probably going to come out, uh, you know, within that first week or two, probably of November, if, if history dictates anything here. But, you know, Sony is in the driver's seat. Uh, you know, they had a massive success this generation. You know, uh, one of their biggest successes since the original, I think, what was the PS, PS, PlayStation or PS2? Uh, but either which way, uh, they're in the driver's seat. Um, they did a lot of things right, especially towards the end of the generation, with the exception of, uh, you know, like I said, they, they were so hell-bent on driving Microsoft under that they basically released all of their hit games and then left themselves with a massive drought 
um, you know, of, of things to show over the past, what, year and a half now where we've seen them absent from nearly everything. Uh, but Microsoft has spent the last half of this gen catching up. And the funny thing is, if any of you were reading the, um, the quotes recently, like Phil Spencer said, we mere, my, my team, the current team that he's in charge of, merely adopted the Xbox One platform. So they had to make up a lot of ground. They didn't have a lot of things in place at the time. And now they do have the studios. Now they do have the tech. Now they do have almost everything. With the one exception is we need to see some studios deliver on the games that fans are wanting. Sony has had that. That's been the ace and hole. It's always been about the games. At the end of the day, it is about the, the games. And uh, if anyone says otherwise, just refer to the Nintendo Switch. Why are they successful? Because they have games you can't find anywhere else. They are experiences that are unique and uh, to Nintendo, and, and, and they have a bit of a market because, again, they offer that console that is good for the kids, it's good for the adults, you know, you, you, you're you going nostalgia with the old gamer, you're bringing in the new gamer, uh, it's at the price point that's usually a little easier on the pocketbooks right out the gate, and they have that niche because, again, they're... Um, you know, the, 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 the portable, this portable side of the things. I don't think if Nintendo didn't have that portability aspect of it, I don't even think they'd be where they are right now. But um, like I said, Sony is in, and is in an interesting position, but they, they do need to fire some shots and, and, and their direction is changing too. It seems like if you, if you've watched all the things that have been happening between the leadership changes and where Jim Ryan seems to be heading they're they're following they're following Xbox's footnote very closely right now. Like it seems like they're starting to head toward that that digital era. That uh, you know the distribution. They're putting a lot more resources into PlayStation now. I suspect that's only going to get bigger and better as time goes along. Uh, they see how much money is on the table with things like Game Pass and and that sort of thing. So it's going to become a subscription war at the end of the day. It's not really going to be a console war. It's going to be it's going to be subs and how many people mm -hmm. they can get into their ecosystem. That's where the fight is going to go. Microsoft knows it. That's why they're trying to get on that fast. And if it wasn't about that, then why the hell would Google Stadia be in that game too? So um, mm -hmm. there there you have it, man. That's kind of where it's going. The consoles are. The consoles are good for us tech geeks, the guys who just yes. like the power and the performance. But outside of that, that isn't where the battle is going to be. It's not going to come down about raw numbers of who sells more what. I, I'm pretty sure that Sony PlayStation 5 is still is still going to kick some butt. It's still probably going to be the market leader, especially because, again, they have the foothold in the European market. They have a foothold more in Asia where Xbox just cannot grab a hold of anything. Um, Xbox, the Series X will probably do okay here, but again, you can play your Xbox games on PC and you can play them on a variety of different things. So I, I still think, uh, Microsoft's messaging has to be on point. The performance has to deliver. Um, Sony might have a little bit of both. I mean, even if this beast comes out to be in nine teraflops, it's still going to be a beast. Um, you know, but again, this proof's in the pudding. It's going to come down to the games, uh, and I'm not worried about Sony too much right now. I'm more worried about Microsoft and how they plan to to get out the door because they they've struggled and, and like I said, their launch is paramount more so than Sony's. Where I think a lot of fans are just gonna they're gonna gravitate, but I do think they're gonna we're gonna see one little shift this gen. I think we're gonna see more people coming back to Xbox, and I also yeah. think we're gonna see more traditional Sony loyalists actually take a chance on xbox because of game pass and because of the series x uh, i think we'll see a little bit more of a shift that way where more guys will go out and pick one up as long as again uh, studios like the initiative uh can deliver big on their promises well i mean well everything you said makes sense <clears throat> there's no doubt about that uh, uh you know in regard i'm actually not worried about microsoft i mean i know that there's room to be concerned simply because they didn't deliver their first party dream uh, this generation, and we know that uh, there's a, the change of ideology and commitment to the, the the customer, the gamer, has completely changed with uh, 15 plus studios, and uh, it seems as if they're shopping for more. Not only in Poland, which we talked about yesterday, but also in Japan. Uh, like I said, I, I'm still in the belief that they're going to build uh, um, an initiative level Japanese studio to uh to be at the forefront of their uh asian invasion if you will to try and uh <laughs> get that market because like you said they they've had a terrible time and the xbox there has not they they have not been able to make not even a, a toe let alone a foothold 
in the Asian market. It's just it's just not what they are into. And now, yeah, the Vita still outsells it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, well, I mean, yeah, that's it, a it, shame. It, yeah, that, it, that is a shame. <laughs> but you know, interestingly enough. Um, you know, with uh, you know, with Microsoft uh, having the uh, Project X Cloud uh, doing very well for it, and it's in, in its alpha slash beta. Uh, once that launches fully, they're going to appeal to uh, a market that has completely been taken over uh, by by the mobile. Uh, so they're you know th that region of gamers are used to playing on their tablets. They're used to playing on their phones, and they're used to playing on their their on their laptops. Home consoles have taken a complete back seat. So uh, what's going to be interesting is to see where they go with that. But getting back to Sony and CES, uh, Zemi, I, I want to get your opinion on this, dude. Uh, obviously, there's there's a lot at stake in the next generation. Uh, and you know what? Uh, we have seen market leaders collapse and fall in on themselves. We saw it with Sony's uh, PS2 to the PS3. We saw it with Xbox, the uh, 360 to the Xbox One. We saw the Nintendo Wii to the Wii U. We've seen market leaders fall. And it doesn't necessarily always mean because of, of boldness or cockiness. Sure, that I'm sure that hurts Sony with, hey, get another job if you want a PS3, and uh, and uh, I got a console for you if you don't want to if you don't want to be online all the time. The, the good old Donnie D uh, and and Nintendo. Well, the, the, their, mar their their messaging is what hurt them. We didn't know what we were buying when we bought the with the Wii U. Is it a Wii? Is it is it is it, do we get a U with it? I, I wasn't sure. Um, so that, you know that we had a we had, we had a problem there. So we we can't definitively say that Sony, especially now with Jim Ryan, because Jim Jim has said some some pretty silly things in his career while he was heading up the uh, the the uh, UK division of Sony, where he kind of put his foot in the mouth, so uh, uh, so to speak. So. Am I am I expecting him to do that now as the head of all of Sony? He'll probably not make that mistake because of the position he holds. But for you, and in your personal opinion, <clears throat> f with CES coming up on Monday, is it important for Sony to show something to their fans, considering if you look back to the last 12 months, maybe if you want to take it back to 18 months, They've kind of pulled themselves out of the spotlight, out of the mind share of gamers. I mean, they pulled out of E3. They didn't have a PSX once again. They pulled out of uh, the uh, the Tokyo Game Show. They didn't show anything in, at Gamescom. They they've really kind of you know, pulled themselves out. Do they do they need to show something to their fans? You know, I don't think that they need to show really anything at that event you know I, now obviously it would be nice if they would you know i'm sure you know playstation um you, you know gamers would would like to have some you know like news tap into what's going on at sony what's going on with the ps5 and stuff uh but as as far as that you know i don't think that they need to i i i think what they might do is show off uh like you know you guys were saying the uh like a new vr you know i think that that's a possibility um I, and I'm not super well versed in the Sony the way that you know probably a lot of you other guys are. Um, but one thing I don't think that they need to do is I really don't think that they need to show off the PS5 at that event. I think it would be a lot better if they held off and they showed it at E3. And you know, of course, Xbox has shown off the Xbox Series X, but they shoot you know like they showed the box. They didn't really tell us what was inside the box. They just showed us the box and. You know, we already knew that Xbox was making that console, so that's not a huge surprise. the The, the surprise was that they 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 did the most you know unconventional way of announcing their system. But you know, at E three, you know, twenty twenty, that's when we're going to hear a lot of the really finer details about you know what the Xbox Series is gonna you know Series X is gonna be able to do, what the PS five is gonna be able to do, and it's gonna have a lot more viewership there than it is at you know this first event of the year. So I think it would make more sense for them to wait and show the PS5 
at um at e3 i mean if nothing else they may unveil and and show what the box is actually going to look like maybe talk about the vr uh but i don't think it's necessary i i think that they can pretty much do whatever they want and they're you know unless they unless they do an awful 20 you know 13 microsoft disaster i i think that they're going to end up selling you know just as many consoles that as they did this generation i think xbox is you know probably going to sell maybe you know uh more but i i think sony is still going to be the leader in console sales uh not that that really matters with how the industry is going with subscriptions you know and and you know meaning a heck of a lot more than actual console sales um but yeah i mean i, I don't think that they really have to do really anything Okay, I mean, listen, it makes sense. Everyone, I believe, is in the agreement that Sony, because they're the market leader uh, and and has such a strong uh, generation that they don't necessarily have to show anything. Me, personally, I, I would disagree, only because I think that you cannot rest on your laurels. Uh, and I know that, you know, the, you know, you know what the problem is for me? The problem is, is that... We know for a fact, and again, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put my stake in the poll and say they can't make any adjustments. But from what we're hearing from numerous sources, the 9.2 teraflops is basically what the console is going to be. That 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 is pretty much a lock. Uh, we've heard that from Al, Albert Panella, who used to work for Microsoft. We've heard that from Digital Foundry. <laughs> we've heard that we had many many different things uh, where that's pretty much a lock now. Uh, now, th- now, the reason why I'm, 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 I want to hear from Sony is because they have yet to address it. Uh, that's a problem. That you know, burying your head in the sand and hoping that people forget about it is, is a problem. And I, I, I think they need, they need to let us know. And I say us because I'm buying it day one. King's buying it day one. Znoof is probably going to buy it day one, and I'm sure Zemi, if you have the money, you'll probably buy it day one with, along with a lot of people in this chat. So I don't think that Sony can just rest on their laurels. I think we need to see something. I mean, Corey Barlog is going to be there as a present, uh, as a presenter. Now, what he's presenting, well, that leave that's that leaves room for speculation. I would love to believe that we're going to get. I don't care if it's thirty seconds of God of War two, or maybe the the the, the canceled God of War VR. Yeah, well, totally. I, I, well, I, I don't know if the, God of War needs VR in its life. If, but. if if you look at the wording, right? The wording says vision. Yes. Ah, uh, CS show beautiful new tech. I don't know. Yeah, no, no. It's it's it, 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 it. Listen, it's it's definitely again room for speculation. Um, I want a new one. Boom. I'm tired of this one, boom. Yes, I'm I tired agree. of the wires. I'm tired of this, this stuff. I want, I want <laughs> to walk around untethered. I want a camera in the front, Sony. I want a camera in the front so I don't bump into my TV that costs a lot. I, w- I don't want to knock over anything inside my living room. You know, I, Sony. I know you're working on it. L- let's get it out now, please, please, now, now, please. I hope that's at CES. I I think I will share harder if that's at CES than at PlayStation 5. Because I know the PlayStation 5 is coming. I want concrete on this VR. And I think they're the only company capable of taking VR where it needs to go because it will be affordable. It will be at a price point where if you have a PlayStation and hopefully all the 120 some odd million of you guys can get it together and, and please buy one so we can start taking this thing to the next generation and everybody be walking down the streets with their VR. Imagine X Cloud in your VR. I mean, come on, man. Let's go. Let's get it together, guys. Come on. Yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, but listen, let's move on to the next topic. All right. And, and, and I think, I, I think everyone is going to be interested to talk about this. Um, obviously you can see it pop up on the screen. Uh, when you, when you mention Vince Zampella, who is oh. this gentleman right here. Now I happen to have a tremendous amount of, uh, affection and admiration for this man. And the reason why I can publicly and not embarrassingly say that is because, this is a guy that, uh, if you've been following gaming as long as I have, was at the top of his game 
uh, during the Call of Duty uh, days at Infinity Ward when he worked uh, exclusively for that company and Activision. And as you as you may or may not know, uh, he and his partner at the time were uh, abruptly shown the door, uh, escorted out by security. Their wow. boxes of the, uh, from their desk dropped at their feet, and the door slammed in their face. Now, it was a big lawsuit. Uh, it was a, um, a, a you know a big to do. Um, and uh, it, 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 it shocked the gaming world. There's no doubt about it. It, it, it. Not to mention it was a tremendous amount of egg on the face of Activision. Uh, they showed their, they showed their, their true colors of being the, I don't want to say, I don't want to curse. I try not to curse on the air. The, 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 the scum of, uh, uh, and villainy of, of the, uh, the gaming world. Let's just say that. And, uh, he picked himself up, and he created Respawn Entertainment. Now, his partner, which was another uh, uh, at the time, had left the business altogether, and it's now run by, of course, Vince Ampella. And uh, he, uh, we have we have information that he ha he was just given a huge promotion, which I'm sure is going to come with a tremendous payday, and is slated to take over Dice LA to head up work on a brand new game. Now, what that game is, is what we're going to speculate later. Now, I am going to say this. Um, if you look at Respawn Entertainment, right, since their inception, they have not made a stinker, a bad game, or something that people did not cheer in the streets about. And I'm talking about there was true success with Titanfall 1, a new IP, an exclusive for the Xbox One launch, which is still one of my favorite games, a title that I put hundreds and hundreds of hours into. Titanfall 2, still, again, in my, in my, one of my favorite games to play. You know, obviously it didn't do as well as Titanfall 1, but that's because of the, the, the way it was marketed. Uh, put in between Call of Duty and Battlefield was not smart. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've seen success in Apex Legends, which has been sweeping the world, taking on, you know, the, the PUBGs and Fortnites of the world. And, of course, the incredible Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is a raging success, not only commercially, but critically with the fan base. Now, seeing all of this new information makes me have serious high hopes for whatever he is going to spearhead at DICE. Uh, and I'm going to say this, that's going to change significantly in 2020 because the Los Angeles Times has officially reported that Respawn Entertainment co-founder and CEO Vince Ampella is in fact going to assume a leadership of the entire Dice LA studio, which is expected to begin work on a new original game under a new name. Um, King, I want to go to you first. You know, first of all, I want to get your thoughts on Vince Ampella as as a developer. But more importantly, are you happy to know that someone that has the chops could go into Dice? And really shake things up because, quite frankly, a lot of people haven't been happy with their last couple of games. Well, I think he's like the Tom Cruise of it. I think he's Maverick. Um, when they were forcing him to use that, uh, what what what's that engine called? The uh, um, the Frostbite engine. Yes. Um, he bucked he said that trend. <laughs> he said he said, you know, I'm not going to use it, and and it it was justified in his results. Um, to be unceremoniously removed from your workplace. Um, I want everybody to get into a little place in their chest right now and think about uh, security coming to your desk or coming to your job or coming to wherever you're at and telling you to get out of the company after you know you put your blood, sweat, and tears in there. That's kind of disrespectful and terrible for any person. So to have this level of redemption going forward, uh, I can only do nothing but applaud the man. Apex Legends is an absolute uh monster a juggernaut that came out of left field that he pushed forward uh, uh all the games that his name is attached to 
have some form of high praise and accolades and have some level of care attached to them. All right. So that doesn't come by chance. So when he's put in charge of dice, where we feel that dice has fell short uh, a couple of uh, games uh, and they need that level of care, who else to put in there, but a maverick, who else to put in there? Somebody who's willing to, to push his, uh, his thoughts forward to be felt and heard. Um, redemption is a great story. And this is, is in a redemption story, you know, for this man, uh, I honestly believe that whatever game that he does uh, get a chance to spearhead and make will do great things. You just look at the level of care of apex and how I know that really blindsided a lot of people because everybody was trying to figure out what would take down Fortnite. Sure. It didn't take down Fortnite, but did it put a scare in Fortnite? Hell yeah, it did. Um, and it's still uh, garnishing uh, praise across the boards. I saw on uh, Newf uh, put in the, the chat that he does like, or well, he plays PUBG and he gets mad at the end. <laughs> 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 I was reading that. And I'm like, yo, you're not the only one. I, I played it the other day and I just threw my controller. <laughs> So I was in the bottom like five and I got killed and I didn't even get a chance to get off a shot. And I had the best set. Um, I was so pissed off. Um, so I feel your pain. But yeah, an apex legend, even when you die, you're happy, right? You're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the hell he infused in PUBG game. is like going out and buying a brand new car and then getting into an accident like five minutes later. And you're like, God. Dang, you know what I mean? Like that's that's what it is. You get in the house, you pick up all this good shit, and like five seconds later, you get shot by some maggot you can't even see, like halfway across the map. You're like, well, that was that was that was fantastic. I went shopping. This is what this game is. I go shopping for guns, and then I get shot. You know, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah. So I I I hope. Well, you know what? I'm not even gonna hope. I know. You know, the man's pedigree speaks for itself. Um. I know the great things is coming out of dice and that only bears greater fruit for us. You know, brand new IP. Everybody's eyes is like, what can it be? What can it be? Because we know respawn entertainment is insane and synonymous with great gunplay. Yes. <laughs> I don't care what yeah. games you play. Uh -huh. Their gun game is in impeccable so yeah I'm, I'm down for anything that he does and i definitely will go out and support uh him simply based off the fact that no one should be treated how he was treated and you know we we, we went out there and we went crazy when it was um well uh, uh was a, a a decky uh this guy i'm sorry i, I don't like his oh name. you're so talking his, about uh the, yeah the, the, konami yes yeah yes. so when when konami did him dirty everybody was an up in the uproar and going crazy you Kojima. know and, yeah, yeah, Kojima, Kojima. and yeah. you know he had his redemption game and i don't care how it's received or what it is but he got a chance to get that off his chest and i believe that um he got his off his chest with uh, Apex and looked at that. It was fantastic, right? So going forward, it's definitely going to be a super game coming from him and, um, and Dice. I'm, I'm happy that Dice doesn't go away the way of the dinosaur like Tatio or something like that, a Data East. Yeah, no, no, that's that's a great point. Real quick, uh, new before I get to you, I have to thank a couple of people. First of all, Scrub Nurse, thanks so much for being here, dude. He drops five dollars super chat. He says it's PlayStation. And this is going back to the other topic. If they show a title screen of a game, it'll distract people and the media away from the console and what uh, and, and what it's packing. That's pr that's pretty interesting because they do uh -huh. they they, are, they do pull a Nintendo. They show a screen, everyone is like, what what's in this hand? And I'm looking at the right hand. <laughs> Uh, you know, from Barrel Hills Cop 2, if you remember that, you know, I've, I have these summonses in this hand and I have this $200 in this hand. You don't remember what's in the left hand, right? I mean, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's, uh, so I remember that. That's one of my favorite movies, me and my brother. Um, Crazy Made Gaming with the outstanding $5 Super Chat. He says, I was listening to the Xbox 2 and just mentioned the lack of Xbox support in pretty much every region other than the US and the UK. What are your thoughts? I mean, look, here's the thing. Um, yes, I, I agree that they need to expand, uh, and, and, and you can see that they're doing that again. You have to understand, I, and Jez, you know, I, I get his frustration uh, and he is a journalist and he's going to say what he's going to say. And he's an absolutely entitled to his opinion. So I do agree that they need to do better. 
Uh, but like I said on the Xbox podcast yesterday, that it, Microsoft is a very large ship, and it takes time to turn it around. And Phil is doing that. And you can see that they're doing that because they've already spoken publicly that they want to be inclusive. They want to involve the Asian market. They want to, in, in, they're shopping in Poland for a developer there. They're probably shopping in other countries as well to try and get a foothold in that region and have a developer in that region making games for that region, allowing more people to get, you know, to, to play Xbox titles. So, I, I think that yeah he's he's right on when he says that, but I, I again I we have to be patient. And I know some people don't want to be, but Phil is making the moves now. LMNOP drops in a uh, five dollar super chat, and I want to thank him for being here. He says on December twenty sixth, twenty nineteen, Sony Interactive Entertainment filed a patent for gesture based user interface for AR with VR with gaze trigger. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and that sounds that sounds pretty damn interesting if you ask me, and something that I do hope comes to the PlayStation VR uh, uh, 2.0 as we've downed it. And JD Gamer drops an outstanding and very generous ten dollars super chat. He says PlayStation didn't produce a steady stream of AAA games this gen. They didn't do it between the years of 2013 and 2016. And if they didn't have great games, uh, take away Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War, Spider-Man, Last of Us uh, 2 is our, uh, what, what great double-A games. I mean, I mean, I agree with you that if you take away those games that, of course, they, they wouldn't have a stellar lineup. But, but, but when you kind of just flip the coin, just to be fair here... You look at what Microsoft put out, and they put out a lot of a lot of really good games. I'm not going to say they didn't. In fact, all of their um, um, first party games I've played and beaten, so I've enjoyed them all. It's just that they weren't on the level of those particular titles. Now that is going to change with this generation, and I'm excited, and I think you are as well as everybody on this panel is excited to see where they're going to go. But getting back to Vince Ampella, you know, he had some interesting things to say, Noof, and I, I'll get your opinion on, on what he said. He said that uh, in regards to Dice LA, we are probably going to rebrand. We want to give it a new image. We want people to say, this is a destination you can go and make new content. I think mm -hmm. they've I think they've gotten the branding that they are of the uh, that they are the support studio of Dice Stockholm that needs to change. I think rebranding is important for showing people that hey, come here, uh, come to work here. We're going to do some things amazing. And uh, to follow that up, the uh, EA Chief Studios Officer Laura Meal said that the company expects the revamped studio will work on and create a game on their own under Zampella's leadership. She continues with this, and I genuinely believe that this is going to help guide them creatively. I, uh, he's going to help them further fortify and build out their talent and their team. I think we're going to have a really strong studio out of Los Angeles. Uh, they can go from there and support they they can go from a support team to a full standalone studio and create new game offerings. Now, obviously, uh, uh, Noof, I, I know that you've played Battlefield online. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you've enjoyed the last two. A lot of people enjoyed the the uh, return to boots on the ground with, uh, I believe it was uh, Battlefield five or no battlefield mm -hmm. one and then battlefield five came out or further going into once again boots on the ground a lot of people was hoping that they would go more modern are you happy to know that vince Zampella is not only going to be taking over uh a dice la but may you know rebranding and changing it for the better maybe we'll get a new modern type of warfare game from this support studio now changing to its own creative development house 
Well, the first thing I heard is they're going to change the name from Dice LA to Checkers LA. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope not. <laughs> uh, no, but look, there's no question. Vince Sampella has, um, you know, he he had he's in touch with the gaming, like what what makes successful games, right? I mean, obviously with Infinity Ward, he took them to a new pinnacle of success. He made several uh, amazing games for Activision and through the Call of Duty franchise before getting the boot for some weird reason. Probably because, you know what, he grew a set of balls and said, you know what, if we're going to do these games, we're going to do it the way I feel it needs to be done. Whereas Activision constantly, you know, was pushing like overpriced DLC. You know, they were taking advantage of the consumer. And this is something that constantly happens. It's whether it's movies or the music industry or even gaming is sometimes the worst thing you can do for yourself is create a successful game. Because what happens is the top brass at the, the executive level, they start messing with with your success like they're not satisfied that your game sold a million copies now your next game's got to sell three million and we need to have all these microtransactions and we have to figure out a way that this game can constantly be bigger and better each and every day which is why we see these sequels just get constantly mashed out and i think this is what happened with dice and with the battlefield franchise now mind you battlefield's always been some people love it to death some people hate it. Some people are in between. I like both franchises, but they both they both look and feel drastically different from each other, like Call of Duty or Titanfall. Mm -hmm. Titanfall is closer to Call of Duty than it is to Battlefield, but it borrows some aspects of some of the best games, and which is why Titanfall, in my opinion, is a successful game and an awesome game in its own right. But the thing is with, with um, the games that respawn is made especially from the shooting side of things they're easier to pick up and play they're easier for people to jump in and have fun immediately where battlefield is one of those games the payoff is a little longer you can't just jump in and and pick, especially you know as you as you get into like when battlefield starts to get like all of their people rolling uh, you, you tend to get into a lot of lobbies where you're just getting your butt handed to you by guys and girls and whoever that just know how to play these games. They know how to exploit the maps, blah, blah, blah. But like Battlefield definitely needed a bit of a break. I think going to sort of World War era games back to back was not a great choice. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't know how they, how they figure this stuff out. I mean, I did like Battlefield 5. I think it's way better than Battlefield 1. But at the same time, you know, we've heard the, the community asking multiple times, where's Bad Company? Where's a game yes, that Bad Company related? Yes. Right? Where is that? Now, here's what I would do if you're Zampelli. You rebrand that company. I would pick up a lot of those devs if there's any left. From Remember Danger Close who made Medal of Honor? Now, that was yes. one of my favorite yeah. shooters. Not yeah. talking about Medal of Honor Warfighter. That one, that one took a drastic turn. I did not like that one, but I liked the first one that was that was set that was actually made by real um, the the real guys. What, what do you, what do you call them? Those the, the ghost guys that they had. Like they, they came in and had input on the game. Oh, the operators. The yes. operators, yes. and they had real input on the game. Apparently, the missions were based loosely based around real missions they were actually involved in. Yeah. Uh, so that game felt visceral. It felt real. The multiplayer was a little bit of a downtrod. It was smaller. It was more like Call of Duty maps with the battlefield feel, and I liked that, and that was what was great. That's what worked for me, but it didn't work for enough people, and therefore Medal of Honor bit the dust and went the wayside, and this is what I'm saying. The worst thing you can do is make successful games because the executives can't stop meddling. They don't let the creators be creative anymore. They start telling them what they're going to do, and they ruin the creative process. We see it with Bungie. We see it with uh, Infinity Ward. We see it with every big one where they just go, man, you got to tear this the game into a game that everybody loves and all the kids want to play and you got <laughs> microtransactions and pink guns and bullshit just fucking let them make the games they want to make if they're successful great if they're not just give them another chance don't don't disband i hate that method too as soon as a company does not make a very a really successful game what happens Oh, your studio gets downsized or you get closed out completely and you got to go find a new freaking job. Like, like not everybody is going to make a 10 out of 10 game. Not everybody's going to hit a home run every single time. I think you got to have enough confidence and support in your company to let them do the right thing. But I hate this is how every company now follows industry trends. Like, you know, the battle Royale got popular. So now everybody and their dogs got to make a battle Royale game. Like just let creators be creative. Like take, take the trust level that, that uh, Sony had with Corey Barlog when he took over for God of War. That was a massive change. And some people still to this day don't realize how big of a change and a risk that was. And I remember Corey saying the first time, who was it? Uh, who was it one of the execs? Was it Shuhei or somebody? That he took a look at the, the direction that the new God yes, of War went and, and he didn't like it. And he, this is garbage. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Sharks. And Corey's throat went up in his, you know, and uh, but somehow or another, they let him go forward. And guess what? God of War turned out to be one of the biggest games from last year and one of the biggest success stories of all time. Now, the question is, is God, Corey going to still be involved in God of War going forward? Because we've seen that every God of War game so far, I think, has just about had a different director. I don't right? I know what's Stay funny. On three. Yes, yeah. I don't think he's going to be, dude. Right. So that's always a big gamble. I would assume going forward that then this God of War is going to is going to bore the same template. But you guys see what I'm saying. Like so, getting just back to Vince, he's a very talented guy. I just hope that they give him, uh, you know, enough control and freedom to do what he needs to do. And these these companies have got to stop like forcing their their best studios to make games year in and year out. Give it up. Just let them make the games at their own pace. You know what? There's enough games out there for us all to play, but I guess that's the way they get into now, right? It's like we got to keep our stockbrokers happy. We got to keep Wall Street happy, which means we need another Call of Duty game every year well, because we, otherwise we're going to have a dip in our stocks during that quarter, right? It's, that's it's, a, it's a give and take type of thing, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. You know, underperforming teams, I just had to, you know, evaluate a team and you know, some of those guys didn't get the bonus, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm pretty sure if if your faceless suit, you know, you're, you're heartless because when they're a number, you don't care. But when mm -hmm. they're, they're absolutely people that, you know, you, you actually have a heart. Well, hopefully you do. You hopefully you have a heart. But when they don't perform and it's a, a open company, but that means where it's shared in stocks and, you know, you have a boardroom and, you know, people are pushing these numbers. There's a fight upstairs and there's a fight downstairs. Yep. And you have to have a, a happy medium. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, sometimes your favorite company, because they underperformed or because they didn't go with a trend and, and, and it's right. Nerf is right. You know, um, if in, in an ideal world, in the world that we come from, see, he's mm -hmm. talking from yeah. a world that we came from. Right. right. The world that we came from, guys made a game and it was a magical game. Now, this industry is bigger than movies. This industry is bigger than car industries. This industry is the, the highest gross in entertainment industry in the world. We're a part of that push, that consciousness, where we came from the back doors of you know, we have Bonk's Adventures, beautiful games like that that just came out of nowhere that wouldn't be possible in this day and age because they're boardrooms and they're suits in charge of things. So when when he's talking, he's talking from a place of hurt where creativity is being stifled. And it's being stifled because they're under the gun to produce. And if they have to produce... Aren't you going to default to what's at the mainstream right now? Aren't you going to look at what's right. more popular? So, yeah, um, at the back of your mind, when you go to work, if you're under the gun to perform for something, then you're going to fall back to the least common denominator or the most popular denominator, which right now is probably Fortnite and those Battle Royale games. And I'm glad to see certain companies taking the initiative to move away from that and to get back to what was real. You know, Konami started to ground itself and started to go back to how Konami felt. So hopefully other companies can allow their developers that space and that room to breathe. Yeah. That's all he's looking for. He's just looking mm -hmm. for the companies to allow those developers room to breathe without that constant threat of termination and canceling, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, feel, I, I feel everything that he just said. Sorry for jumping into your thing, but <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I was, I, I was done, but like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a sad state of affairs. I mean, you got to make companies money too, but, and, and they obviously have to keep a heartbeat on what's happening because otherwise you turn into telltale games, telltale just stop while they were ahead. Great, Telltale, great made, Telltale made great games. There's no question. They had a they had a niche in the market. The problem was they started to make too many of these games, where they became cannon fodder, and uh, people just didn't pay attention to them at some point. You know, and this is what happens to so these annual these annual franchises. They fall into the Disney uh, the frame of things where you're just starting to pump these things out, and nobody gives a crap anymore. You know, what? I love Gears of War, but honestly. I don't. I don't want a Gears of War every year. I think I would grow sick of it, and I'd look for Most something else. Would do it. I agree with you. I agree. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, listen, you know, just to kind of uh, to touch on that for a second, uh, we we have, uh, and I'm going to do, I'm going to be bringing this up on a on a future episode of the Xbox Factor podcast. I'm working some uh, some angles right now. From what we understand, Gear Six is a ways out, and we are starting to hear rumbling that uh, they will not be coming out. That will not be the next game from the coalition. That it's going to be. Uh, whether it's going to be a new game now, whether that's a new IP or something else, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm working it, uh, but uh, um, Zemi, I want to get your opinion on this. Obviously, uh, Zempella, when he was talking, he emphasized that the studio's new direction would entirely be separate from Dice and Respawn, and along with the new duties at EA Dice or whatever it ends up being called. He will also remain the head of Respawn, so he's going to be he's going to be carrying a, 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 the title, but he's also going to be carrying the workload as well. Now, hearing this makes me smile for Vince Zampella simply because he was thrown away like trash. We talked about that early on in the uh, in the topic, but as great as this news is, I'm also very saddened by it. Now you can say, "Wait a second, boom! You just said you were happy for the man. What the hell are you talking about?" And I'm going to say this from a selfish part of Boomstick. Uh, I really, really want a Titanfall 3. And the more <laughs> success that this dude seems to have, the further away we seem to get from Titanfall 3. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously we just talked about how Battlefield has been lacking. And a solid leadership change at DICE could be the shot in the arm that the studio needs to put out a quality battlefield, whether it's ba Bad Company 3. Uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts on this, dude? Um, <clears throat> well, I'm super excited for him. I mean, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, I don't exactly know what happened at Activision. He probably told them, no, I want to do it this way. And they said no. <laughs> and, and he just he was very persistent. And they ended up giving him the boot. But, you know, I... I I'm definitely excited to see that, you know, his hard work and his dedication to not steer off of the path that he believes he should go to is, 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 you know, earning him tenfold, you know, um, because, you know, he is still the leader of respawn as well as like, uh, dice LA, correct. Yeah, believe, that's correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and that's fantastic. Well, you know, whenever I first, you know, heard the story, I like my heart sunk for a second. I'm going to be honest because I really liked that Star Wars game. And I, and like my first thought was, oh no, they're taking like, they're, what are they going to do at Respawn? Like, you know what I mean? Like the only EA studio that's making good Star Wars games is just lost their top dude. And so I'm super excited to hear that that's not actually what it is. Um, but you know, I, I'm I'm definitely really really interested to know what exactly the game that they're going to be working on at Dice LA. You know, what exactly is it going to be? I mean, I you know I think like a first person shooter probably makes the most sense, and that would just be absolutely fantastic. You know, one thing that always separated Battlefield to Call of Duty for me was just the pure smoothness of Call of Duty versus Battlefield. Battlefield always just seemed a little clunky, a little bit harder to aim. The movement was a little bit, you know, off and stuff like that. And that's one thing that I think Call of Duty has always done right. And that's that's a huge, huge reason why I think Call of Duty is one of the most popular first person shooters on consoles is because it is just so smooth. It's so easy to jump in and, 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 and get a, you know, get a, get a hang of like how the controls work and stuff like that. And I think that's a big reason why Titanfall was so big because it, it was just such a great shooter. It was so yes. solid, you know, so, solid controls. Absolutely. Just smooth. And I think that's a big reason why apex was, you know, like garnered as much success as it did as well is because it's such a smooth shooter. Um, so, you know, I, I don't, th I don't think he's probably going to have very much to do with battlefield. I think that that's probably going to be Stockholm, which I don't think he's the head of. Um, but I would no, love, no, no, no. He's, he, this is, this is Stockholm is an entirely different part of, uh, that's another dice. Yeah. Now uh, isn't this, Stockholm this was, uh, kind of like the, the kid brother, mm -hmm. uh, on, only known for support. Whereas now whatever he, they decide to call this new dice is going to be its own entity, its own, you know, triple A developer with triple A money backing it and a triple A uh, uh, CEO at the head. 
Yeah. Now, if I'm not mistaken, isn't Stockholm though the people who do develop Battlefield? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. They, they so, do so he's battle. really not going to have anything to do with Battlefield unless they just for some reason wanted to listen to him. Well, uh, no. What, what is, I mean, listen again. This this is this is a very subjective uh, situation because we don't have all the aesthetics of what exactly is going to happen, but. For all we know, he could, in fact, be making a new Battlefield game. We again, we don't know. It's a new project, uh, just because it's uh, it, it's. Well, it's, they said a brand new IP, right? Yeah, yes, a brand new IP. But is it a brand new IP that that's somehow attached to Battlefield? I I don't know. I mean, it, it it's hard to say. It's not Titanfall three, which pisses me off, but. You know, whatever. Yeah. You know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, regardless, I, I mean, I'm super excited for whatever it is. I mean, because obviously, Zen's, you know, Vince Zampella has already shown to everyone that what he does, he does correctly. I mean, yeah. everything from Respawn, I absolutely enjoyed, to the exception of Apex. I really did not like that game. It's a great game. It's just not a great it's game not for, for you. Me. It's okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a fantastically well crafted and well made game i just didn't like the you know the time to kill on it and, and stuff like that but i would love for him to do like a modern warfare game i would absolutely love that uh because that's one thing that i have been just wishing and hoping that um you know dice would do uh for like the longest time is, is to bring back the modern aspect because those are my favorite ones I, i'll tell you another thing that i think would be absolutely amazing because i i always love star wars how amazing would it be if they did like another Republic Commando game? <sighs> Republic Commando is is one of the most yeah. underrated first person titles you've ever played or you haven't played. I loved that game. Yeah, like I would absolutely fall in love. I don't know if that would be classified as a new IP. That would be more of like you know bringing back like an old IP. But even if you know, like even if it wasn't that, but it was like a Star Wars first person shooter, I think that would be fantastic as well. So I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy for him. I'm happy that you know his dedication to doing what he thinks is right is you know is paying off, and and that EA definitely instills as much trust to him as as they do. And I can't wait to see what comes out of that new stu uh, that new studio. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great point. And obviously this has been a fantastic topic because like I I'm very happy for Vince. I'm glad to see that he is in fact getting his recognition. Uh and I'm glad uh, to see that uh, the success he's having goes to show you how uh stupid Activision was to get rid of the uh rid of these guys the way that they did when they were in charge of Infinity Ward. And again, I mean, obviously Infinity Ward is not the same. They did put out an amazing Call of Duty this year. This Call of Duty, if you haven't played it, I highly recommend it. Uh, I, I loved every minute of it. Uh, I, I, I've, I, I'm not a multiplayer guy, so I don't play the multiplayer, and that's fine. I, don't, I never did. I only played for the single player. And I got almost every achievement but one uh, in that game, and I loved every minute of it. But I want to move on to a topic that... It it, it 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 should be fun. It's uh should be subjective. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of heavy opinions both on the panel, of course, in the chat. Uh, you know, there were tons of incredible news stories um, this year. Well, in 2019, um, and uh, it, it, these stories wowed both the gaming media, the YouTube content creation community, and of course, the gaming, the general gaming public. And here's, here's some of the stories, and we're not going to get into particulars because I have a question for each individual panel member. Um, here, here's some of the top stories. Final Fantasy VII becoming exclusive for the PlayStation 4 for an entire year. Insomniac Games being bought and is now a Sony first-party studio. Xbox Game Pass service changing the industry unlike anything before it. Sony skipping E3 2019 and not having a PSX. Death Stranding being the most controversial release of the decade. Uh, Microsoft announcing the Series X at the Game Awards. Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 being shown off running at, at the in-game engine of the next Xbox. 
Capcom's rise to greatness from the brink of disaster and how awesome the future looks for that company. Nintendo showing the gaming world that power is secondary when you have strong first, second, and third party exclusives and how they dominated the MPDs both in hardware and software sales. The implosion of Bioware and how that developer was on the edge of destruction with both fans and electronic arts. Google Stadia's horrible launch and the possibility of one hundreds of millions of dollars being lost should they fail to grab the gamer's attention. The rise of dominance for Respawn Entertainment, which we just talked about, for both Apex Legends and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, making them one of the best developers in gaming. Now, here is my question to, of course, the panel and the chat. Now, I know for a fact I missed several big stories that grabbed the headlines in 2019. But for you, and I'll start with King, what was the biggest news that had you reading, talking, and writing about what happened on social media? Um, let, let, let Nerf go first. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me gather my thoughts right now. It's a um, tough one. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah that, that, this is a big one. Um, yeah, All right, yeah, welcome yeah, back to I, I was I was very heavy in these Twitter streets, so <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go and see what was the the biggest problem. Okay, all right. So, Noof, we'll, we'll go. We'll go with you. Now, obviously, Noof, you're you're usually uh, you're very active on Twitter. Mm, yeah. uh, you obviously have your own show. You do have your own YouTube channel. Uh, for you personally, uh, as many ups and downs as 2019 had in the news stories, what for you was the biggest headline grabber? Oh, boom! You know what? I have to say, overall. Nothing, nothing to me perplexed me and was as polarizing this year as the whole Death Stranding thing. Ah, that's a good one. That's true. Um, I mean, I know it's easier to say that because it's also one of the more recent stories. You know, a lot of stories get lost in the shuffle. But, like, seriously, when, when was the last time we had a topic that was, like I said, was this engaging, had everybody from both sides uh, shouting from the rooftops for good or for bad? Uh, a game that got notoriety for no good reason other than people have some weird affliction with Hideo Kojima and on top of it, his relationship with Jeff Keighley and over promoting at the Game Awards for not just one year, but for two or three years, he had this guy on stage. He just, you know, it was it was a constant thing. Look, people, I like the game. I, I even I even splurged. 80 bucks in my hard-earned cash to go buy this thing myself just so I can honestly say I'd give it an honest shot to see if there was something catchy about this game or not. Look, graphics-wise, it's it's another stellar game from uh, from uh, from that from the studio and as a Sony, uh, you know, a Sony exclusive or exclusive for now, I guess you could say, at least the console. The game looks the game looks fine. There's definitely things to like about the game. It's not like like anyone who just comes out and says it's a piece of trash and, you, and I love that word, probably the most overused word of 2019 for sure was trash. Um, you know, like I said, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Uh, I can see how people would like this game. I can also see why some people don't like it. I really think it depends on the kind of gamer you are and what your expectations are. Just like Sekiro. I can understand why people love Sekiro. I can totally understand the other side. If you can't stand Sekiro, I had people watching me stream that game and they're like, I can't believe this is game of the year or like I would never play this game because it's, it's just too frustrating. Um, I do like the game. I suck at it. Totally. I'll, I'll come out and admit that I was, I was never good at those style of games and I'm probably never going to be, but uh, it is what it is. But Dead Stranding, man, like seriously, there was so much around this game. Um, if, I don't feel it was a game of the year. I think it was a solid game, but a game of the year note. Like to me, honestly, if I had to compare a Dead Stranding to Days Gone, Days Gone was far more of a game of the year contender, in my opinion, than Days Gone ever was. I really liked, or uh, I really liked Days Gone. I did not like Dead Stranding too much. It was just too boring, too much balancing backpack bullshit. Uh, lots of confusing dialogue, scenes all over the place. Uh, like I said, great actors in the game, great motion cap, great graphics, uh, but 
it's not the kind of game for me where I'm just going to keep walking across long stretches of map trying to find uh, or trying to avoid these uh, oil sludge creatures that come mysteriously out of the ground and try to grab your ball sack while you're at it. Like, no, that's not my <laughs> cup of tea, bro. Um, yeah, but I'll leave it at that. It has to be Death Stranding. Nothing was as polarizing, confusing, and probably still as confusing as that game is, ever was, uh, all that stuff. So that's that's my take on it. I got mine. Okay, that's uh, I mean, listen, I, and I agree, I, I, I absolutely agree. I think Death Stranding, uh, for whether or not you loved it, hated it, bought it, did not buy it, waiting for a sale or not, uh, it was polarizing, it did uh, take over the, the, the mind share of gamers, both positively and negatively. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, you know, uh, I, I was very hard on the Game Awards when we thought that death sh- that the entire show was going to be completely uh, about one developer when it was supposed to celebrate all of gaming. And to give Jeff Keighley credit, now whether that was public pressure, whether that was uh, pressure from um, other uh, investors in the Game Awards, I honestly don't know. But I never got that feeling. Death Stranding. Uh, went out with a whimper at that show. Yes, it did snag three awards out of its nine nominations. Um, it did not get Game of the Year, which I was very surprised. I was very happy that uh, Sekiro or Sekiro got it because that game, even though I'll never beat it, is a, is a masterpiece. Um, and uh, I think that it deserved that trophy. Um, and uh, again, to, to Jeff's uh, credit, the game was not uh, the, the Death Stranding did not take over the Game Awards like I initially thought it was going to be. Uh, so you know, kudos on that. Uh, King, did you say you have yours? Yes, I do. Okay, so listen, let's go to King and find out what news story of 2019 shocked you as a gamer slash content creator and had you talking about it on these Twitter streets. Sony new show E3. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. It's a big one. Um. Sony no show period. Sony taking a ball and just walking away. Uh, Sony. <laughs> you saying just... they went home and locked the door? <laughs> yeah, they, they were like, yeah, I don't feel like playing. I don't got nothing to show. God bless. And I, I was like, what? And I thought it was a joke. I thought they were trolling until I got to the E3 floor and I noticed that they aren't there. And you know, um, the onus was on Microsoft to perform and you know perform admirably but again there's a contingent of me that's inside of me like there's a duality that uh is equal to playstation is equal to microsoft so um them not being there i thought okay well you know what whatever no it wasn't whatever you got to the floor you saw nintendo doing their thing you saw microsoft doing their thing and you're like something's missing you know where's that flash where's that little you know sony swagger you know um we, we saw some of the p um playstation vr games there those were independents that right, had to show their it. games mm-hmm. and then it, it left me to think what about the developers that sat there and worked on games for sony that didn't have their platform for them to talk about and it just made me realize that this is a different company moving in a different direction doing a different thing and the the utter where, where Microsoft was doing a super fan service and they were doing a super dis fan service, I, I guess if that's a word, uh, it, it allowed me to sit back and say, damn, this, this is a big thing and no one is really shouting about it because I guess the Sony fan felt that well, some felt that, okay, well, you know, they they did us great. They gave us a couple of games that we're happy about that were game of the year, and they don't really need to be there. And is it, um, did you say they didn't need to be there because they weren't going to be there and you couldn't, you know, shout and you didn't think your voice would be heard? Um, did you want to sound like a fraud if you say, well, you know, they're not there and I'm not going to support them anymore? Um, it just left you in an indifferent space. And I didn't think that it was talked about more and they weren't held to the fire more because that was, that was kind of messed up, you know, on all fronts from a fan, um, mm-hmm. from, from a, a whatchamacallit's uh, developer standpoint, uh, you know, from a gamer, it's it, it just, it just left you in a weird space that Sony just decided not to show up at E3. And I never thought that was an option. I thought, 
you know, when you when you you know strap <laughs> yeah. up to fight, you know, you're supposed to throw them hands. I, I honestly, that's how I thought it was. I thought it was, you know, this is what we do. This is how it goes, and you show up. Win, lose, or draw, you fight. And they just was like, I'm, I'm not going to be there. And I thought that was <laughs> my biggest thing that bothered me all last year. So right. that's that's my thing on it. No, that's, I mean, I mean, listen. I like how you come at this because not only are you a fan, not only are you someone that has multiple Sony products in your home, you're looking at it from a business standpoint because you're a businessman at your at your core, at, at, at the what, what what you know what what takes care of your family and and what keeps the you know the the, the roof over the heads. You're you're a businessman at heart, and you understand from a business perspective that this was probably not the smartest move for Sony. And again, we don't know if it's going to hurt them in the long run. Obviously, we don't know. Sony, you know, they did drop some, um, some, you know, some nuggets of information during E3 uh, that were strategically put there so they could retain some mind share. Uh, you know, obviously, we started getting some information about the PS5 and the SSD, and they showed Spider-Man running, how it was no load times. And, you know, they, 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 they still kept people you know, I guess coming for the information, but then they see that that information seemed to dry up and they haven't done much of anything. Uh, I mean, even their, even their little Sony uh, events that they have monthly, which they're about, you know, I don't know, 12, 12, 13 minutes. I happen to like them. A lot of people don't. I think that they, they give enough. Inf- now, some of them are than others. Um, no doubt about that. Um, like the last one, we obviously got a chance to not only see a, a snippet of Ghost of Tsushima, which we got at the Game Awards, but we got to see Resident Evil Three. So I'm a big, you know, I was very excited about that. Uh, but it's interesting. It, 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 that's that, that's a that's a good pick, Zemi Games. I want to go to you next on this. Um, for you personally, someone that is involved in several podcasts, someone that has their own channel and is doing uh, daily and sometimes, well, I'll say weekly, but sometimes daily content regarding the gaming verse. What was your top story? that grabbed the headlines for 2019. You know, you know, this was so hard. This is probably the, like the toughest topic you've ever sent me, right? Because there's <laughs> so much stuff that happened, so many <laughs> huge pieces of news. But so, I mean, for me, I have to say Bungie splitting from Activision. That That's was a great one, dude. That is a really big one. Good one. Yeah. And I mean, and don't get me wrong. It's not as earth shattering as like Xbox revealing like their new console. <clears throat> and it's not as controversial as like Death Stranding. Um, but, you know, like it, it is so rare to see two absolute behemoth companies splitting up the way that they did. I mean, Activision is a huge publisher. I mean, just look at what they create. I mean, Call of Duty alone makes them, you know, the behemoth that they are. Bungie, I mean, they go back, you know, a heck of a long time ago. And and Halo is one of, like, the best games that has ever released, right? And both of these decided to split up. But what I think is just makes the story so much more interesting is that I think it's just really shows the amount of like disdain that a developer can have towards its publisher and, a, and, and, and that a publisher a lot of the times really forces a developer to do things that they don't want to do or take a direction that they don't want to do. And I think that that was a big reason why Bungie decided to split from Activision. They wanted to do with their baby what they wanted to do. Right. Um, you know, and ever since they split up, they're doing absolutely fantastic. They added cross save. They made the game free to play. They've released, you know, another DLC, um, and 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 they've done all this by just keeping on to their creative control of their game and and making it what they want to to actually make it, and not make what is going to make the most money for them or a publisher, or you know, or a publisher. And, and for me, that just you know that just screamed out the frustration that, you know, a developer can have, you know, with the, you know, with the restrictions that a publish uh, a publisher can put on them. And, uh, and, and that's just for me, the reason why this was like the biggest piece of news for me personally. Well, I, again, surprisingly enough, that wasn't in my list and I knew I was going to forget something. Obviously there was a lot of information to, uh, to go over. And I tried to remember, you know what? What some of the biggest ones? I'm glad you brought this up because that, everything you said is still—it's still amazing to think that they left. 
like they're doing their own thing. And obviously, someone like King and Cognito and plenty of plenty of people, plenty of people in the chat love Destiny. They keep going back to it. I I have not been back to it for quite some time. Um, and uh, I don't. I I obviously I'm interested to see what changes that they make, especially when they launch on their own, the next game, which is, uh, you know, going to be destiny three, how different of a game that's going to be from the beginning of its launch through its lifespan, because obviously they are now running the show. They have full control over the IP, the launch, when it launches, how it launches, what it looks like, cross play, cross save, everything involved. And it's going to be, very interesting, and this is this has been a, a pretty pr pretty cool topic. I wasn't sure how this was going to go, and obviously we are almost at the two hour mark, and I don't want to you know keep anybody because it is Friday, but I do have a closing question for today, and this is a fun one, uh, and I'll start with King. Out of everything that we know is coming out in 2019, what is your personal most anticipated game of 2020? Halo. <laughs> Halo. 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 I don't. Halo. Halo. This, this, this Halo. <laughs> oh, Halo. When, Mike, when Master Chief stepped his foot out, Halo. When he turned that light yeah. on, on, on his gun, Halo. There's, if anybody tells you there's any other game, okay, God bless to them. Yeah. But sorry, Halo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> baby. It's infinite. So the possibilities on what it's gonna be, I, I'm never gonna forget the time when I walked in eBay stores. Um, e, it was EB EB games. EB games. EB yes. games. Yeah. And um, I said, "What's that?" They they said, "Well, it's the Microsoft, you know, console." I'm like, "Okay." And they were playing Halo, and I went in the first door corridor, and the light turned on on the flashlight on your gun. And I looked up and I looked down, I looked left, I looked right. And I said, can I, um, I could pre-order this? They said, yeah, yeah, we, we take a pre-orders right now. <laughs> said, and from that moment on, I've been addicted mm. to Master Chief and Halo. So there's nothing, if, if I can only get one game this year, it's Halo. Okay. That's I mean I mean I I mean it's it's an obvious but it's a strong pick because listen this is going to be 343's redemption or swan song uh and, and, and I mean that in the most uh, positive way and negative way possible when I say redemption I mean that this game needs to hit and stick uh obviously 4 had an amazing single player campaign and a very disliked multiplayer five had a horrendous single player campaign uh which took me years to finally beat i was like you know what let me just play through this game so i can say i beat everything i don't want to be that fraud to say yeah i played everything but halo 5 i finally beat it i i almost almost 18 months after it released um and it had an amazing multiplayer and i think what everyone will agree and uh, will hope for is that we're going to get both. We're going to get mm -hmm. a solid, incredible, different way of looking at Master Chief, a strong single-player story. Maybe we'll get some co-op in there. And, and obviously, the, the, the key factor is how good is the multiplayer going to be? And I think that that is going to be, and again, I really mean that, whether it's their redemption or swan song, because if they don't get this right now, I think 343 is in big trouble. And I will be very disappointed with the company and Microsoft if they don't get this right. Uh, uh, Nukem, I want to go to you next. For you personally, 2020 is slated to have some really strong games. What is your most anticipated game of 2020? Uh, before I answer that, let's just head over to this guy. What do you, what do you think, Ernie? Well, first of all, guys, just let me tell you that I'm very really disappointed. We got to have a game. We like after all these years, we've seen all these games. Well, where's my commando game? There should be a commando. <laughs> that way, I can put the Xbox One X up on my shoulder and I can shoot it like a bazooka and kill everybody. And I, because I just wanted to go around in the game and have all the players control me, so I could pick up a little puny rat like Sully and say, "Sully, you know where is it? 
the scuttle. And you mean like this guy on the screen right here, Phil Spencer like, holding the rocket launcher. Exactly. He he stole it right out of my game, Phil Spencer. <laughs> you don't look as good as me, though. My pipes are still pumping. But, yes, we need more games with Ani, more, more Predator games with Ani. Like you want to have me in the game with actual, you know, good sound effects and a real good voice actor. I'm like the guy who did Mortal Kombat, and he sounded like somebody kicking me in the balls. That's not what we need. We need real Ani in here. There you go. Some more commando games, Arnie says. That's, that's okay. What we and well, first of all, Arnold, thank you so much. And again, the check <laughs> is in the mail. I definitely appreciate you being here, taking some time out of your busy uh, 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 schedule. But yeah, for new, for, um, personally, I mean, obviously, but you know, we talked about it at the beginning. Twenty twenty is a big year. Lot, lots of big games that we know. From what you know, what, what, what for you is 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 on the top of your list? Well, I hate to steal one from uh, King over there, but it's got to be Halo. I mean, nothing wrong with that. You know. Like, Halo is an iconic franchise. To me, Halo is to Xbox what Mario and Zelda are for Nintendo. And you can't really picture any Xbox console release without knowing there needs to be a Halo. And everyone, you know, Halo launched at the original Xbox. Then we had, you know, Halo 2 shortly after, uh, or well, the Halo 2 was on the original Xbox. But then Halo 3 followed shortly after the 360 came out. You know what I mean? Like, there's usually one either at launch or within a year or two of the console. And, and and there's there's no stakes have been higher for, I think, any top-tier franchise than they are right now with Halo. Because, again, guys like everybody on this panel, we know and love that game. We know and love it for different reasons. Halo, Halo will always appeal to us because we kind of were weaned on Halo. But Halo tried to break – like, Halo still has to break into the market for all these people who have gravitated to Fortnite. Like, each generation of gamers grows up with a different game that they identify with and a different character. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, generally the parents right now, like, like a lot of these kids, they don't know Mario and Zelda the way we know them. They know them because their parents introduce them to them and they still don't have that same affliction for them because they haven't gone up through their childhood with these games. Now in 20 or 30 years time, when a lot of these kids who play the Fortnite games or are playing whatever, they, they, they're adults and they're having kids. They're going to look and they're going to identify with something else differently as well. But hey, there's nothing bigger or nothing rotting on a franchise more than Halo right now. I, I think it is going to be a phenomenal success, right? But the way, the way again, we look at success is going to be very different from the way it was in the past. We know it's going to be great because, one, it's going to be in Game Pass. So no matter if you're a Halo fan or not, you're probably going to get invested and you're probably going to play it. I think the longest tale is, is how long does this game gravitate? Is it going to be hot for a week and then it's not the next week? Uh, how how can the multiplayer bring back in? How can it how can it please the old Halo fans and the new ones alike? How can it keep people invested in in its story? into its? Because for me, I'm not worried about their multiplayer because I think their multiplayer keeps getting bigger and better. I thought Halo 5's multiplayer was fantastic. The question is, how can they deliver? on campaign and i think the first thing is just make a campaign that you want to play a campaign that does not confuse you a campaign that does not deviate uh from its course because you know halo 5 when that when that was first launched those commercials came out it looked dope nobody could tell me it didn't look dope when you saw master chief and Locke confront each other and stuff they, they kind of had the idea, but everybody also knows that the game turned out far from what sort of what that yes. what the commercial teased. The game went in a different direction. I think Locke was a great character. Locke can stand on his own two feet, but maybe Locke would have been better introduced as like a DLC thing where uh, much like Halo weaned in the ODST game, which turned out to be a pretty decent success and a good game on its own. It didn't even have Master Chief in it, but it was still a successful, decent game. But again, they didn't combine it together. So I think as long as the graphics, and I think that's a big thing, is Halo needs a bit of an overhaul. It's It's been too far the same for too long, and uh, it needs to get out of these confined quarters. It needs great enemies. And like I've always said, you cannot have a great hero without a great villain and that's something that a lot of our games not just halo but a lot of games have have missed for years if there's one constant in the mario franchise is that bowser it always seems to be the villain most of the time does he not so right. you need that you need something there you know the the batman wouldn't be batman without the Joker without a multitude of great villains that he has, but the Joker's the one that stands out. And Chief is the same thing. You and, and it can it be a story too that doesn't necessarily have to start and end with one game. Like carry it over. Like uh it could be a story that you have this great ending, but it's not over. It's kind of like how you thought Darth Vader died and then he came back, you know, like those sorts of things. Um, you know, carry over in the games. They don't have to be one contained unit that can carry over and we want to continue that story. 
Uh, so just make great villains again, great graphics. But Halo Ban is the game that I am most anticipating this year. There's lots of other. I can't wait for The Last of Us 2 as well. But Halo is just because I want it to be great again. I want this game to be awesome. I think it's going to be a showcase pinnacle title for the new Xbox Series X. A great point. Uh, I, I hope that the, the big bad is Atriox from uh, Halo. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, there you go. King knows. King yeah. knows from uh, Halo Wars mm, 2. Yeah. Atriox is a menacing v- uh, character. And, man, he would give Chief a run for his money. And he could hold uh, uh, an entire game himself. But real quick, uh, Zemi, before I get to you on your most anticipated, I have to thank crazy mate gaming twice actually he drops a two dollar super chat and he says hashtag double barrel gaming best podcast on youtube but dude that's really nice of you to say i really super appreciate that and he says uh, he follows it up with an additional five dollar super chat he says i look forward to your podcast every day helps me get through work thank you well no no thank you first of all for the generosity you don't have to give me anything and that is greatly appreciated but i'm glad i get i i, I get to help people power their way through work with some fun podcasts that love being positive. Maybe I'm over too positive. Maybe I'm too hyped sometimes, but I'd rather be that than a negative Nancy or it's just a straight up a hole. So uh, let me, let me get over to Zemi. Now, Zemi, I kind of know what Zemi's answer is, but I want an explanation behind (laughs) it. Uh, Zemi for you personally with 2020 being 2020 being as stout as it is with games to come. What for you is your most anticipated? What do you think it is? I'm going to say Cyberpunk 2077. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely, man. Dude, like this, like Cyberpunk looks so freaking good. It, like, I, like in, in my opinion, I think it's, it's, it's going to be so good. And from like the gameplay I've seen, I think it really is going to redefine what an RPG can actually be, which, you know, just is, is amazing in of itself. Almost like the same way I think that the Witcher in a way kind of redefined what an RPG could be. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm super pumped for the game. It's, it's dark, it's gritty. It's, you know, very, very mature. I, I cannot wait to get my, my hands on that, uh, on that game. And uh, fortunately for me, I'm not going to have to wait all that much longer. <laughs> so I'm, I'm super pumped for it. Well, I mean, listen, all, all good picks. Uh, for me personally, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to say two. Uh, and as as much as I'd love to jump on the bandwagon and say Halo, it's not. It's not Halo for me. I, I know Halo is going to be big, and I'm going to be excited to play it. For me, they are two remakes. And yes, I may get booed off my own show, but I'm going to say it anyway. Fuck it. Pardon my French. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Final <laughs> Fantasy VII Remake because, my God, that looks incredible. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, for me personally, uh, is is an important game uh, in in my life because I somehow or another, through uh, the printing out and when, running out my mo- my mother's ink uh, of the uh, the game facts of the translation, I beat it uh, in uh, Japanese when it first released, where I think it had seventy two discs. Um, and then when it was released in the uh, in the Americas on the PlayStation One, I beat it a second time, and I absolutely love that franchise. I loved the the supers as as, as some people call them. My favorite still Knights of the Round. Um, Hades was another one of my favorites, and those are all coming back, and I'm very excited for that. And the one that has pa- pushed past. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake for me is because of my love for this franchise, my number one franchise of all time, Resident Evil 3 Remake Nemesis uh, or Resident Evil 3 Nemesis Remake. I am so stoked that micro- uh, that uh, that Capcom has come back the way that they have. And this is only the beginning. We're hearing rumblings on Reset Era and the 4chan forums that the next one to come after this is either going to be Dino Crisis with I, I scream to the heavens, yay, <laughs> and or and or uh, the Dreamcast uh, uh, exclusive, which originally was exclusive, Code Veronica, yeah. which would be amazing to have as a remake. Obviously, that's uh, when we talk about the Dreamcast, it is known for me, and I think King will uh, agree, the GOAT of gaming because it's still one of my favorite consoles of all time yes. but this has been a very solid and really fun two plus hours 
of gaming talk. I hope everyone enjoyed themselves. We were short a few guests. Uh, obviously, Shady backed out the last minute because he had family obligations. BitCloud was on last night mm -hmm. with me on the Saltiest Podcast. I don't know if mm -hmm. he's under the weather or he just overslept. But Sorry, did you get Sammy? I don't know if you asked Sammy yet. Did you? Uh, yeah, Zemi, yeah, Zemi, he said uh, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah, that, 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 I, I knew that from the beginning. Cyberpunk <laughs> all day long. Jeez, um, well, unless that unless have a brain or what? That, the Harry Potter RPG comes out. Okay, well then, yeah, then that's that's. I know that you're you're working yeah. on again. Your detective slash stalking skills are in full effect. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, again, this has been great. First of all, we had almost a hundred, uh, two hundred and thirty people watching live. That's a big deal uh, for being an early morning breakfast show. Uh, of course, the Super Chats were extremely humbling and very welcomed. We have a couple of new channel members, which I added to the uh, the ticker, as you see at the bottom of the screen throughout the show. I want to thank everyone who, uh, who not only donated to uh, the um, you know Double Barrel Gaming through the Super Chat, but also became channel members. And of course, I could not do this without this amazing panel. So let's get everyone out of here. King, you guys are obviously coming back to the roundtable this Sunday. I don't know what you guys have planned, but the last couple of shows have been nothing short of fire. You guys have been breaking records financially as well as uh, with the numbers for the for the show, and it's well deserved. You guys have been in this game for a while. You put your blood, sweat, and tears into every show, and you guys are one of my personal favorite shows to listen to. Please tell everyone where they can follow you on Twitter, and more importantly, check out some of your great shows, as well as the King of Statues, which it looks like you have a lot of boxes behind you. <laughs> you see them, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, Boom. Those kind of words is incredible. Um, like I said, uh, you know, I'm still trying to get you to E3. So um, <laughs> I got to have my road dog with me. Um, as you can see, uh, uh, I was supposed to do a KOS, uh, but we were off for the week. Uh, I think it's like a week and a half. So I decided to hold off on that. And after we come back on uh, Sunday, I and Lord's podcast at 1 p.m. football season, uh, 11 a.m. I'm um, going to do unboxing. A lot of guys ask me, do I collect the one six scale uh, toys? I have uh, a, a few. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I see. Yeah. It's, uh, it's Brendan Roth's uh, Superman. Looks yes. like mm -hmm. it looks like you got the Joker there. Yeah, I see a Flash. Yeah, I don't know what the one on the extreme left is. Green. That's Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. Ah, that, nice, uh, strong, strong. On that side is uh, classic Superman. Behind him is Shazam. Um, mm -hmm. I have Dolph Maul. I have uh, a couple others. Uh, Jason nice. Freddy. Uh, all that stuff. Um, have those in the boxes. Also had a couple of boxes come in with some mm -hmm. statues. Uh, so <laughs> KOS will be going up right after we go live with um, Iron Lords Podcast. So it'll be up next week. You can find me on Twitter at uh, uh, King David OTW. And um, listen, I, I love uh, coming on Boom Show. I love uh, meeting the, the the panel. If I haven't met them before, love. Uh, well, I know Zenny and I know Nerf. Uh, Listen, this is a great community, fantastic panel. I, I'm so happy when he put out the word. I was like, "Oh yes, man, you crazy? Yeah, I'll be there." <laughs> I, I was up at like nine o'clock with my eyes like tweaking, like, "Is, is the link out?" Um, so listen, I, I I can't wait for what we have coming this year. Boom's show uh, show has been growing. He he is the hardest worker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, dude. <laughs> that you guys will never know. Like, you won't ever understand, to be honest with you. When my phone starts going off at 3 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> I know he's up uh, working on the show. <laughs> and his show notes, yeah. the level of detail. Listen, if this guy was on your case, this is the cop you did not want on your case. Because <laughs> yeah. you are busted, Every T is crossed. Every I is dotted. Yes. yes. <laughs> your goose yeah. is cooked. So <laughs> let me tell you, he is, and he is such a wonderful friend. Thank you, dude. That's very I mean, kind of you to say. A wonder. Y'all think y'all know who he is. He is even more endearing more heartfelt and a wonderful person and all the accolades that he gets and receives is well-deserved. He, no, he's a great you. man. 
I certainly appreciate it. Very, very kind of you to say. And like I said, it's uh, we're, we're, we're going to figure something out. We're going to figure out how I can get myself to E3. Mm -hmm. And uh, and because my it, it, the re if, if people want to know, it's not because I don't want to go to E3. Uh, my wife and I, we are going to be celebrating our 20th year anniversary. And I'm planning to a trip for her. I Obviously, she has to come first. That she is, she is my everything. She is the biggest supporter that I have. So... It's, you know, when you're not working and you're living off a pension, you got to kind of figure out a way to uh, be involved in gaming, which gaming is going to be expensive this year. Uh, E3 is at least minimum $1,500 to get there and actually be able to, you know, eat and live for a little bit. And obviously the the trip that I'm planning, it's not nothing, tr you know, crazy, but I, I want to I wanna do something nice. My wife deserves it. She's a hard worker. She's still working. And uh, she deserves uh, to be treated like a queen. So we're, we're going to figure it out, King, one way or another. But uh, nu Nukem, I want to thank you for being here. I called you <laughs> at the, the, the midnight hour uh, because obviously this would have been uh, – I might have had even canceled the show because you, you really can't run a show of this size with you know two or three people. I mean, you could, but it wouldn't be the same – uh, in in scope, but thank you so much for taking the time to be here. You obviously have been podcasting with me a couple of times, which is great because I love having you on. I love your insight. I love having Arnold at our you know at our beck and call, which is always great. Please tell everyone <laughs> where they can follow you on Twitter. But more importantly, you have something happening very soon on your YouTube channel that I want you to tell people about. Absolutely. Well, boom, you know what? King summed it up very well. You are definitely one of the most awesome guys in the community, and you're definitely perhaps the most prepared guy for these podcasts <laughs> I have ever met. Your notes, like you said, are second to none. They're very detailed. If you, if you, if you, you know, when Boom sends you an invite to be on here, if you don't know what the hell is going down on his show, well, I'm sorry, you just didn't put your part of the work in. Uh, but he, he is awesome, and that is why he's successful, people, because he prepares. And this coming from a guy who did four and a half years of radio, I know what it is to get up and prepare and know your notes go through your topics and be ready to turn the microphone on. And that's, that's the difference right there. Uh, like I said, but you have great guests, man. Great. You've got great shows, great success and uh, much continued support and uh, into 2020 and beyond. Thank and thanks for having me here. I'm always honored when I get the invite because it, truly it is a pleasure and it's always a blast to be here. Like I said, you have the best panel members, you have great guests and I'm just, just glad to be a little bit uh, a part of that. But speaking of my show as well, yes, I do have a YouTube channel because I'm, I'm still like under a thousand, and subs would love to yeah, get to I mean, that listen, magical we, yeah, number. And you're close. You're I've close. been talking listen. about it for two years, and and but you know what? I, I just said it. If you don't put the work in, you don't deserve you don't deserve the accolades. You don't deserve the people. And I have not put the work in, and that that is that is bar none. Uh, so I, my my failures are my fault, and I'm the guy who steps up and owns that. Uh, but with saying that, I will be bringing some stuff back to the channel. Me and Primal Eve, you guys might know her. She is the she is the female version of Nuke Nukem. She yes. can give as good as she gets, but she's awesome. She knows games. She's a Gears of War aficionado. She is super excited to be coming back with me. It's going to be Monday nights following primetime gaming. So after Boom Show, guys, Boom's going to warm you guys up and get you ready. And then me and Primal Eve will take over and take it in a totally different direction. Uh, <laughs> like you said, a little bit raunchy, a little bit adult, a little bit of pop culture, a little bit of gaming. So that gaming after dark, unfortunately, we kind of shut it down a little while back after Google and, and of course, the YouTube kind of screwed everything up with uh, the nixing of their Hangouts and stuff. But we're going to be back, uh, like I said, on my YouTube channel starting next week, next Monday night, 10 Eastern. So when Boom and them wrap up their show, we're going to hit ours. Uh, appreciate your love and support coming over there. Uh, it's not for the kids, though, so make sure you put some earplugs in, put them to bed first because you never know what you're going to hear on our show. We're always <laughs> open for guests too that mother of your uh, community veteran or you're somebody new that just like to come out and vent and have some fun with us uh just send me the message well we're going to try to get a guest or two on our show i'm sure boomstick will be back on there at some point as well yes so again, absolutely. That's next Monday on yes. my youtube channel please go uh, like comment subscribe get me to that 1000 baby you know that's that's the magical number on youtube and we'll see you there otherwise you can always find new nukem in the gutter or always trying to get some community gaming events going on xbox and playstation uh that sort of stuff we'll catch you later people well, listen, first of all, thanks for being here. And listen, I'm going to say this. Uh, Noof is a great guy. He's a great community member. He goes out of his way to uh, make himself very accessible uh, to playing games with this community. A lot, a lot of guys don't do that. 
Um, and he does, and he's always on social media doing that. And I mean, he is probably if I if I if I'm not mistaken, because I saw it this morning. I'm not sure if mm -hmm. you're at nine sixty seven or nine seventy six, but you're close. You're like right there. And I and I really want to put this out there for people uh, as a as, as a content creator. There I'm as close certain... as my ass to a toilet seat, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, that, and that's close. But I'm going to say this as a as a content creator. Uh, there are certain, um, there are certain, um, I just subbed. Oh, very good. Thank uh, thanks, you, King. Brother. Appreciate that, sure. dude. Thank you so much. There are certain milestones in your career, whether it be small or large, uh, that, that matter. And hitting that 1000 is a big deal. Uh, it was a big deal for me. It was a big deal for the iron Lords. It mm -hmm. was a big deal for Brap. Basement Radio Arcade Podcast, and it's a big deal to new. So if you respect me, if you enjoy the content that I bring, and you trust me as someone that's going to give it to you with honesty and positivity, and when need be, call it out, I highly recommend you going over to his uh, – right, I mean, you didn't even have to go far. You click the 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 the, the – the, the arrow down button in the show notes and all this information is right there. Click it, sub it, tell him that boomstick sent you and let's get this guy. Let, let, let's make 2020, uh, at least the start of 2020 ultra special for new Mookum, one of, one of the community good guys and let's get him to a thousand today. I don't think I'm asking too much, but if I am, you know, please let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, new, <laughs> thank you for being here, dude. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks brother. Uh, and uh, of course, subs from the chat. That's awesome. nice. Nice dude. That's strong. What is we got? We're gonna get we're gonna get you. See, I said Noof Nukem at 977. Folks, he is 23 subs away. Come on, folks, let's do it. We still have 177 people in here. Hey, listen, if you have to not sub me, that's fine. Sub this dude. That's what I say. I'm willing to lose a sub or three. Let's get him to a thousand. And of course, Zemi Games. Zemi, listen, dude, I love working with you. I love that you are a part of the Xbox Factor podcast. This it's been a big deal. Uh, the day that you asked, that you became a, a, a permanent panel member, and I love it. Uh, and I love that the fact that when I need help, you are always there to extend your hand, like you did today. Uh, and but uh, you obviously have a lot going on for yourself. Your channel is amazing. You are doing some behind the scenes sleuthing that we're going to start calling you the, the you know the, the <laughs> detective Zemi. Uh, but Dev, tell everyone where they can follow you on Twitter. But more importantly, check out your latest video and where they can find your awesome content. Absolutely. Well, Boom, thank you so much for throwing me this invite for your first Breakfast with Boom for 2020. It was absolutely amazing. Fantastic topics, as always. Uh, if you guys want to, go check out my Twitter. It is uh, at Zimmy Games. My DMs are open. Uh, I always love it whenever anyone in the community sends me a message, wants to talk games or anything like that, or if you need help you know, just throw me a message as well. And then I don't actually have a YouTube anymore. Uh, so just go and subscribe to Noof Nukem because he will give you everything you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely appreciate that, but no, you that, do that have that a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you actually, actually, you know what, just real quick before we get everyone out of here, what, what video did you just put up, man? Cause I think everyone might be interested in that. It's, it's a, it's very, it's, it, it has a lot of speculation in it. I'm still investigating, but okay. I firmly believe that Respawn is making a certain game that I'm really, really excited about. You mean Respawn, um, or do you mean um, not, not Respawn? Rocksteady. Uh, Rocksteady. What am yes. I talking about? Exactly. So I actually just recently made a video uh, talking about that theory about you know uh, what game I think Rocksteady is currently working on, and uh, there's actually going to be a follow up because I actually found. A few more like little tidbits this of is, um, folks, this is real detective work that he's doing. He explained yeah. it to me before the show. I don't know how true it's going to end up being, but you know, <laughs> I, I really I, I have a gut feeling. I'm telling you. Well, listen, I, 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 again, you put in the work. I think people should check out your, uh, your, uh, your, you know, the video you just put up. I, I'm, I'm very interested to see which way it goes. But I want to thank everyone for being here. Of course, I have to thank two more people before we get everyone out of here. Uh, uh, Xbox Battlegrounds with the outstanding and very generous five dollars super chat. He says best podcast on planet Earth. That is really kind of you to say thank you so much. And Infinite with the ten dollars super chat. He says we will all uh, will always be the best podcast. Thanks again for all the quality content. Well, the first 
well, thank you for the the unbelievable compliment, but of course the generosity. I want to wish everyone a really great weekend. Enjoy gaming. Treat others how you want to be treated. And guess what, folks? It doesn't cost anything to be nice. Take care and watch the new outro. Thank you.